Even though we've had these stories over the last couple of days of possible gambling charges against him, and then Bowen, Antonio and Ben Rama are the front line. And Chelsea, their record signing, Moises Caicedo, is among the substitutes today. No Romeo Lavia at all. He arrived as well from Southampton this week. Mauricio Pochettino says it's common sense because they arrived late, they haven't trained properly in the last few days, and he said particularly Lavia needs a few days to settle. So uh, Chelsea's team, Sanchez in goal, De Sassi, Thiago Silva and Colwell. Mal Gusto makes his first start as right wing back because captain James is injured. Ben Chilwell is the captain on the other side, the left wing back. Then Fernandez, Enzo Fernandez, Gallagher and Chukwemeka, Sterling and Jackson. So those are the teams, Paul. I think it was reasonably pleased, Mauricio Pochettino, last week with a performance against Liverpool. There was times in that game where they were outplayed but we know that he's, it's, a, it's a transitional period, he's, he's trying to bring in players, he's losing a lot of players, and he's trying to create something. I think he'd be reasonably pleased with what he saw last week, hence the reason there's only one enforced change from him. And with the West Ham supporters in full voice, the game begins, and Chelsea immediately fire the ball down the left-hand side and win a throw-in that will be taken by Levi Colwell, who I felt settled into it last week on what was his Chelsea senior competitive debut. Up against Salah for that. Ball played into the penalty area on the left-hand side. Chukwemeka is after this. Chukwemeka's crossed to the back post. West Ham already under pressure here. That was headed away by Emerson. And then it is eventually volleyed out of play for a throw into Chelsea on the right. Chelsea straight onto them. Started well. Got some good possession, Chelsea. Chukwemeka down this left-hand side. Cuts in on his left foot. Thinks it to the far post. Chelsea have got the ball again with Conor Gallagher in the middle. They're dominating early possession here. They look very comfortable. So, second Premier League match of the season for these two. They both started with 1-1 draws last weekend. Chelsea coming forward again. Shot on the edge of the box is blocked. And West Ham play it forward. Fantonio, who throws himself down after minimal contact with Axel De Sassi as he went past him. The ball was nowhere near them. And uh, referee John Brooks has waved play on. Yeah, uh, let the play go. Antonio is putting a, quite a lonely figure at the moment. It's going to be a long afternoon for him if his team don't squeeze up the pitch and uh, squeeze, close these gaps, what Chelsea are finding in between the lines. So I assume Paul will see Caicedo at some point, you would have thought, during the course of the match. I think. I mean, does that surprise you at all that he's on the bench as the ball goes out for a throw into West Ham? Well, I think if you listen to Pochettino's comments there in his post-match press conference, um, I think you can you can understand the reasons he's brought the player in this week. There was a lot of transfer talk surrounding him, a lot of unsettlement. He's only had been there for a couple of days, and I think it's just common sense that he's he's not in the starting eleven today. Yeah. But yeah, I do think we'll see him at some point, John. So foul playing the ball for it. There's a West Ham man down at the back. It might be Emerson, but West Ham continue their attack, and it's headed out of play by Chilwell. So a throw in that Sofal will take, but referee Brooks has now spotted that the man is down. Is it Emerson? No, it is Pakatar actually, who is down, and uh, and he's holding his left lower leg, and uh, and referee Brooks will go to check on him. Just on Pakatar, and I think the injury was done. Just seeing it again now, he's jumping into a challenge. He might have just been caught by Conor Gallagher, as the two of them challenged. Just on the issue of Pakatar, we know, um, as I, as I say, that uh, there there are stories that he is the subject of possible gambling charges and I suppose it's a little like Ivan Tony, who continued to play for Brentford uh, until such point came that uh, that the charges arose and, and there was a resolution to that. I think that's what they what the manager will they look at it like that I think you know until until he's been charged or there's, there's been found guilty of something the manager will use him and he's been an outstanding player for them I thought the partnership they had with Declan Rice last year was key to a lot of what they did and you can see why Manchester City are uh, admiring from a distance at the moment. Well, John Brooks has had a look and he's waved on the uh, the West Ham physio. So Pakatar is now receiving some treatment and an early stoppage in play. Three minutes played, five live and the World Service from the BBC. West Ham nil, Chelsea nil. Uh, one match in the Super League this afternoon, three o'clock kickoff. Dave Woods. Leeds 18, Warrington 16, it swings again. Luke Hurley, a try scorer for Leeds and Rhys Martins kicked the goal. There's 30 minutes left to play. Leeds 18, Warrington 16. And in the League Cup in Scotland, Celtic are 1-0 down to Kilmarnock. So Celtic 1, uh, Kilmarnock 1, Celtic 0. And they're into the last 15 minutes there. So the possibility that Celtic might be, the holders, might be knocked out of the League Cup. Uh, throw for Sofal. Pakatar is just being led to the halfway line off the pitch. But the throw is headed out. And West Ham have a corner. This is their first attack of the match after that lengthy stoppage. Pakatar waiting to come back on. But he won't be on before the corner is taken. It's James Ward-Prowse who's getting a warm reception down there from the West Ham fans. 
It's actually quite close to the Chelsea fans in their section as well. But Ward-Prowse raises his left arm, then swings it over to the back post, it's headed down by Zuma! Goalkeeper Sanchez dives for it, there was another West Ham player in there on the line, it was Gerard Bowen who threw, threw himself at it, but Sanchez, I think, just got something on it, and Chelsea were able to clear it. Well, there's a perfect example of what James Ward-Prowse brings to you with this set-piece delivery. We talk about his set plays from direct free kicks, we talk about his goal to the side that he brings, but that there is a perfect example of his delivery from a corner. It was a perfect assist for Zuma on the far post. Ball falls in the middle of the box, Sanchez dives Superman style, just gets enough on it to take it off Bowen, but that's what West Ham will be looking for this season off James Ward-Prowse. West Ham nil, Chelsea nil. And Pakatar is now back on the field. And uh, it really, oh, given away, that was an error, an error by Gusto on his full debut, but West Ham couldn't take advantage of that. And, and that was an opportunity too, but uh, given away by Ben Rama when he when he did have options there, and Chelsea are able to clear through Colwell, who slices it out of play. Well, that's, throwing the other half that's the risk that you run, isn't it, when you play play out from the back, and you see so many managers playing that way now, and they allow the players to take the risk, take the opportunity. And for Gusto, who's coming to the side, I think this is only second start for Chelsea today. It's going to take him time to adjust. I thought Zuma might have done a little better actually with the the corner from Ward Prowse it hit him almost as much as anything else but uh, West Ham with Bourne on the right hand side Bourne lays it into the penalty area at the so foul and an important covering interception from Gallagher who just raced in there and was able to bundle it behind for another West Ham corner he does really well there Conor Gallagher we know his en energy we know his energy uh, up and down the field it was just a good piece of tracking back from him there Conor Gallagher looked as though he might have actually fallen awkwardly and he slid onto the track. Anyway, corner, Ward Prowse again to the back post. <laughs> it's down and it's in! Again! For West Ham from the Ward Prowse corner, West Ham are in front in the seventh minute and that's the Ward Prowse delivery for you. David Moy's side, cup winners last season, celebrating it today and one minute up already. Well, they had a warning five minutes ago, probably less than that. Same corner, carbon copy from James Ward-Prowse, lifted to the far post, Zuma was his target, Aguirre comes around the back, completely unmarked, free header at the far post, it's clearly something that West Ham have worked hard on at the training ground, they know the quality that James Ward-Prowse brings, two corners, one assist already, fantastic header from Aguirre at the far post. And, uh, you know, the, the defending of that set piece, seemed rather disorganised actually and he ended up against Conor Gallagher who didn't get off the ground well it's, it was a carbon copy of one two minutes ago Chelsea didn't learn their lesson the ball was placed into the same area at the far post and it seems that Conor Gallagher for me shouldn't be picking up the two centre-halves of West Ham that's a strange one when you've got you've got the three central defenders that's an organisational thing but you've got to give West Ham credit because they've worked on it they've dragged Chelsea players to the front post and Ward Prowse's delivery was excellent well, that is just what West Ham, just what David Moyes, just what all of these people in claret and blue wanted to see here. Obviously, against Chelsea, whatever the state of Chelsea, never mind them finishing 12th place in the, uh, in the Premier League last season, finishing just four points above West Ham, actually, in the Premier League table at the end of it all. You know, there is obviously real power in this Chelsea team as the ball is played through to Jackson oh and the goalkeeper comes out and catches him Jackson went down and the offside flag was up well Ariola came out Jackson was sent through got a touch past the goalkeeper who came out from this distance it did seem that Ariola had caught him but John Brooks quickly looked across to his assistant who's who's one of the new assistants by the way in the Premier League this season Akel Housen and, uh, and between them, they ruled that he was offside when he was put through. But that is tight, Paul. We're seeing it again. Listen, we're a long way from the action in the, in the London Stadium, but from up here, it did look like Alphonse Areola was, was lucky. It was one of those where the goalkeeper comes out, and as a goalkeeper, what you do, you make a decision, and he goes to ground. He's not taken Jackson out, but he's left Jackson the opportunity to leave his legs in. But this, this could still be a penalty because... I, uh, the, well, it is very tight when the ball was played through to Jackson to make the run with the naked eye. 
he might be onside, so this could be a penalty to, to Chelsea. What do you think? The VAR are checking whether it was offside or not. So I tight. don't think the referee actually gave a penalty, though, did he? Because I think the, the linesman put his flag up and the game stopped. But they are actually checking the VAR in the build-up to this goal when Jackson runs through one-on-one with Areola. He's offside. He has given us offside. And there is relief. There is relief here. And, um, you know, when... It, when you think about it, the, the, the challenge was given before the offside, wasn't it? That's so the right. challenge was put in before play was stopped. So had he been onside, that would have been a penalty. But it's not. He was offside, but it was very tight. And it was, and it was clever by Jackson. Like I say, it was one of those where the goalkeeper gave the striker the opportunity to leave his legs there and get a foul. It was a penalty. It would have been given. Now that is what we saw from Jackson last week in a positive sense against Liverpool. That sort of play... And uh, West Ham coming forward, looking for a second goal. West Ham lead by one goal to nil. The early header from the Moroccan World Cup player, the central defender, Nayef Agad, who got up and headed it in from six yards or so from Ward Prowse's corner. Sterling is bundled over near the centre circle. That's a free kick to Chelsea while they organise themselves. More from Dave Woods at Leeds Warrington. Here he comes. Here comes Dave Woods. <laughs> Here comes Dave Woods from Headingley. It's Leeds 24, Warrington 22. James Bentley had extended the lead for Leeds with a try, but Matty Nicholson has just scored and Ratchford's converted. So 24 22 with five and a half minutes to go. Thank you, Dave. So not long to go there. We've only just started here. Ten minutes on the clock. And already drama, Paul Robinson. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Pochettino will be too dissatisfied with the way that his team started, in all honesty, with the possession that they had. But West Ham, you'll see them do this so often this year with James Ward-Prowse in the side. They'll hit teams on the counter-attack, they'll get set plays, and the delivery will be spot on. James Ward-Prowse, West Ham's new number seven, just receiving the ball on the halfway line. And it really does seem strange to see him in a claret and blue shirt, in a West Ham kit, anything other than the Southampton kit after his 410 appearances in all competitions. He was connected with Southampton for 22 years. And he's only 28. Got a fantastic record, hasn't he, like, playing-wise. You very rarely see him injured. He's not one of these players that will be missing for half a season. Like I said before, I think it's a really clever signing by David Moyes. And uh, here is Socek. Long-time dependable man in the West Ham midfield finds Antonio. Antonio strong against Thiago Silva. Cuts into the penalty area. Shoots on his left foot. That was blocked. Comes out to Ward Prowse. Little touch from him to Ben Rama. Left side of the box. Still Ben Rama. Jinking from one side to the other. Still going out of the penalty area. And then he's actually dispossessed Ben Rama. And Sterling will try and pass it forward to Jackson. Poor pass from Sterling. That was cut out. But uh, now Jackson's returned the favour for Sterling. who was tripped. And uh, it is a free kick to Chelsea, and that is a yellow card, which I think is a good decision from, from John Brooks. That was quite blatant, the challenge on Sterling as he was going through, just a tug back from goal scorer Aguerd. So he's yellow card, and it's a free kick to Chelsea. He was away there, Sterling, wasn't he? He'd broken the back line, he was through. He was a long way from goal, obviously, hence why it's a yellow card. But with him and Jackson, they look to have a real set of pace up front now. That's Paul Robinson, former England goalkeeper, former Leeds, Tottenham. Blackburn and we're watching West Ham 1 Chelsea 0 and we're watching Enzo Fernandez used to be the record signing to take this free kick the new number eight for Chelsea this season Enzo Fernandez plays it in between the edge of the six yard box and the penalty spot West Ham headed away comes out to the left hand side for Chelsea Sterling now on the edge of the box here is Chilwell Chilwell into the area to Chukwemeka and then Sterling and now again, this is good passing from Chelsea on the left-hand side. In comes across from Chilwell to the back post and it's headed up and over the top. There were two Chelsea men in there. And I think it was Jackson who got the touch to head it over as he arrived in the six-yard box. So goal kick West Ham, they lead 1-0, Paul. Yeah, Chelsea are threatening though every time they get the ball. Down his left-hand side with Chilwell. Jackson's taken up some fantastic positions. We saw him play against Liverpool last week. There was, there was fits and starts in his game where he looked good and he's looked sharp from the, right from the word go today. As I mentioned, Celtic in trouble in the League Cup in Scotland. Kenny Crawford 
88 minutes on the clock, it's still Kilmarnock 1, Celtic 0, Celtic the holders of this trophy, they've got a couple of minutes of normal time to stay in the competition, 1-0 Kilmarnock, Marley Watkins the goal scorer. Thank you Kenny, so Celtic, Brendan Rodgers Celtic have, uh, well however long is added on at the end of that match to see if they can salvage their position in that tie. Um, choice of listening at the moment on Sports Extra is the 100 as Chelsea play a long ball downfield and it's caught by Ariola, the goalkeeper. Also quite a number of games in the one day cup as well, the cricket. I mean it's a day for cricket today, glorious conditions as uh, Antonio goes down under the challenge on the halfway line. That is not given as a free kick. Chelsea break away, Chelsea with it with Chukwameka who had a good game against Liverpool last week. The youngster, he remember is only 19 years old, the former Aston Villa youngster, as Gallagher plays it out to the right-hand side. There is lots of youth now in this Chelsea squad. They've spent a lot of money, but they've bought a lot of promise as well, Paul. Yeah, it's a very, very young squad when you look at the age of the squad. We know the size of the squad, but the, 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 the average age of the starting eleven of the whole squad. But what they're doing is that they're selling their own youngsters for the financial fair play, obviously because of the profit and loss margins. They've sacrificed the likes of Ampadu, Loftus-Cheek, Mason Mount, for the zero bank balance to bring in other youngsters almost as if to say look our youngsters aren't good enough we need to reinvest elsewhere now if that's a policy that works for them in a couple of years time if they're, they're back at top of the league challenging for champions league trophies again nobody says anything but it's it's a risky policy i mean you look at it since todd bowley has been there 945 million spent i mean it's it's astronomical as I, as I keep saying it is the best part of a billion pounds that they've spent over the course of the last year or at least agreed in transfer fees uh, West Ham coming forward against them though Ben Rama with a cross from the left hand side but it is headed away Pakatao was almost in there it's just over the top of his head and uh, Chelsea have been able to clear it but West Ham looking good here Solchak to Sofal on the right Sofal's cross taken down by Ward Prowse back to Solchak in the D he's being challenged by Chukwameka then on the left hand side Ben Rama hits the shot that is blocked on the edge of the area and it bounces for Jackson of Chelsea and Jackson again who's already been yellow carded had to be sharp there he knew Jackson was coming he, uh, he asked himself for a little bit of extra power and he found it and was able to pass the ball to relative safety well they've got that with Jackson and Sterling the electrifying pace there every time that Chelsea get the ball if West Ham turn over possession and they haven't got cover at the back one ball through the middle of Chelsea have nearly been in two or three times just to underline the youth Paul it's been pointed out to me on the uh, on the BBC Sport website, on the football pages, they have uh, they've spotted that the youngest player in the West Ham team today is Pakatar, who's 25, well, he's nearly 26, and eight of Chelsea's starting 11 are younger than him. It's incredible, isn't it? I mean, you, you look at it last year, we know that Chelsea misfired last year we know it wasn't the season that they, that they they want to remember but with Pochettino going in there with the transitional period that we keep talking about you've got a manager who's able to mold a squad able to mold a team and I think he was clever taking that job John I really do he's bought himself 12 months the expectation mm. at Chelsea is at an all-time low mm. and when, when, when in recent history when have we known Chelsea finished 12 mm. so whatever he does in this next 12 months they're going to be up there, they'll be challenging for Europe again at some point, but he's bought himself time because of where the club's expectation is. Absolutely, you like me, have listened to plenty of managers over the years, and I know whatever the troubles they might get into this season, he will always be able to say, we've improved on last season's 12th place. Here's Sterling, Sterling into the area on the right-hand side, shoots from the angle, but that's a, uh, a clean catch by Ariola above his head. And, and the other point is as well, you know, what's his reputation, Pochettino? His reputation is, as a coach, as a manager, improving players. And you improve players, don't you, when they're younger players in the main. And the relationship that he has with younger players is man management of a, a younger team, if you like. When you look at it, it's a, it's a perfect fit. And I think, you know, with, we, we're in uncharted territory with the amount of spending that's gone on at Chelsea. We don't know if, they might, if the chairman, the owner, is going to hire and fire. But you would think he will have time. <laughs> Hmm. hmm, Chelsea manager has time shot. <laughs> so uh, West Ham won, Chelsea nil, Chelsea in possession inside 
their own half uh, back to the Super League have Leeds won it Dave Woods they have 24-22 Warrington nearly snatched it right at the death Ratchford's grubber kick Matt Dufty saw the ball slip through his fingers when he would look to favourite to score Leeds top six helps remain alive Warrington in the top six still looking vulnerable Leeds 24 Leeds uh, Warrington 22 Chelsea with the ball inside their own half Chuk Rameka I mean, a feature of his play against Liverpool last week, as we uh, said when Matthew Upson was with us at Stamford Bridge, the ground that he covered, and he's doing the same here, Chukwemeka. But now Sterling bursting forward into the right-hand side of the penalty area. Defender went with him, Aguerd, and Aguerd put a foot in and blocked it behind for a corner. And that's been a feature today, Sterling running through what you would used to call the inside right position. One of the older stages, Sterling in this Chelsea team. It's still only 28, though. Corner from the right. Chilwell's gone across there to take it. So Chelsea corner, Ben Chilwell, who's named after the changes as a vice captain this season, and so therefore in the absence of James, and that's a real early blow for Chelsea to lose Rhys James to this hamstring injury, went off last week. So Chilwell, left footed, takes it to the near post. Thiago Silva flicked it on, but straight up in the air, and Ariola came and was able to make the catch. It shows you as well with Pochettino, the youngsters, he's not afraid to play them. You know, Marlo Gusto has come in today, 20 years old, probably only his second game, I think. He was on loan at Leon last year, only played six games. But Pochettino's seen him in training, he's seen him in pre-season, and he, he thinks he's good enough, and he's given him his opportunity. West Ham leading through the Aguerd goal. Scored a couple of goals last season for West Ham, his first season. Obviously, he had that incredible experience with Morocco at the World Cup and then part of the Europa Conference League winning squad. Ball is given away in centre field though. Ward Prowse lost uh, court in possession and Chukwameka plays it just came off the head of Pakatar. However, Sterling, Chelsea's number seven, got, gets it, turns, looks to cross, hits the back of Socek, headed up in the air, not cleared by Emerson, but they have managed to get it away to Sterling again on the right-hand side. Chelsea, their first choice colours in the blue shirts, and shorts, white socks, with the white trim, white numbers on the backs, and here's the blonde-haired Gallagher, 25 yards out, takes it on and shoots, and it's patted back by Ariola to Jackson, who chests it down, but then volleys over from between the spot and the edge of the penalty area, so goal kick West Ham. Got really lucky there, Ariola again. Gallagher's got acres of space outside the box, and he hits what we call the wobble ball. It's straight at the goalkeeper, for whatever reason, he doesn't feel he can catch it, but he pushes it straight in front of him to the edge of the 18 yard box if you don't feel as though you can catch it as a goalkeeper you put it into areas you got lucky then yeah more on that in a moment but uh, we are going to go from london to budapest for the latest on what is the second day of the world athletics championships and catherine merry has news for us I do, John. They've just concluded the men's 1500 meter semi finals, and the men couldn't replicate the women and get three Brits into the final. But Neil Gawley made it, Josh Kerr, the Olympic bronze medalist, made it, but no place in the final for Elliot Giles. And next on track, Katerina Johnson Thompson goes for gold in the heptathlon. Thank you very much. So, uh, just to mark your card, our plan is that we will be taking commentary to see if Katerina Johnson Thompson can take gold in the heptathlon and a little later as well Zonel Hughes will go for Britain in the 100 meters final so commentary to come on that here on Five Live here is uh, Gallagher Chelsea trailing by one goal to nil and uh, Thiago Silva who I thought played as well as anyone in a Chelsea shirt last week you know, even at the age of 38 he's got all of these youngsters around him Paul but uh, he uh, he looks as good as ever well you need your leaders you need your captains you need your managers on the pitch we heard Pep Guardiola last year talk so openly about Gundogan and how much he was his leader on the pitch and when you've got such a young squad you need that Chukwameka has done really well down the left hand side takes it into the penalty area gets the crossover couple of deflections and then it's volleyed away near the edge of the box by Ward Prowse. He's done well there, Chukwameka, but it's again, it's the final end product. It's the last pass with him. He's got some great pace, he's got great, great ability, but it's just there's no end product with him at the moment. Now, Paul, you're the perfect man to talk a little bit more about Jackson. When he had that shot there on the edge of the area, volley, the, you know, to the naked eye for the, for the man or woman in the crowd, they'll be saying, he's, he's shot, he's shot straight at the goalkeeper and he's just patted it back into the penalty area. Yeah, why don't we catch them? Yeah, well, you, you see it, we talk about the wobble ball all the time. When the ball's hit so hard, you make a decision as a goalkeeper. Can I catch it? What are the pros and cons of catching it? If I catch it and drop it in this area, is it going to cause me a problem? 
If not, I push it into another area. But all those dis split second decisions have to be made very quickly. But what he's done there, he's just pushed it straight back out to the edge of the box where he should. He's made a decision, he's not catching it. He needs to push it wider the box. Enzo Fernandez with a cross from the right hand side for Chelsea, but that was over the top of Chilwell, who uh, actually had the defender there with him. He, he leapt for it, couldn't get a touch on it. It was also a feature last week how often Chilwell got himself into a position inside the penalty area, but uh, Vladimir Tufal went with him there and was just close enough, I think, to, to impede him, and therefore it was away and behind goal kick. They're playing well, Chelsea. You know, they're, they're having the lion's share of the possession, they're having the, the most attempts, at, you know going forward and it's just the end product it's just that final pass that final shot on target that, that they've been lacking apart from the goal I don't think the manager will be too disappointed with the way his team are playing uh, back to the League Cup are Celtic out Kenny Crawford yeah Celtic won the domestic treble under Ange Postacoglu last season but they won't be winning the domestic treble under Brendan Rodgers this season Kilmarnock won Celtic now Marley Watkins the Welshman former Barnsley former Norwich former Bristol City striker tapped in at the back post on 58 minutes to give Kilmarnock a memorable, memorable victory here. They're into the quarter-finals of the League Cup. They've already beaten Rangers and Celtic at Rugby Park this season. 1-0 Kilmarnock against Celtic. Well, congratulations to Kilmarnock. And if you're a, a fan of Kilmarnock, why not give Chris Sutton a call later? That That is a... That's a real serious early blow for Brendan Rodgers at Celtic to go out of that competition. Uh, Chris will be on 5 Live with Robbie Savage on 6.06. I'll let you know in the second half when the lines are open. And we are about five minutes away now from uh, the final discipline in the heptathlon in Budapest. It's on BBC television as well, by the way, if you want to watch it or on the, uh, on the iPlayer, on your device. But we will have commentary here. As Chelsea come forward, the ball breaks for Jackson. Oh, and Aged had to be careful there. It was a little, it was a little clumsy the way it bounced away from him. He put his arm up for a moment. I thought he was going to shove him in the back. He's on a yellow card, but he managed to get a touch on it and took it away. And Jackson knows that he's on a yellow card. He's playing on his shoulder, looking for that ball over the top every time. Every time Sterling gets up, gets he faces the ball, faces forward, and he looks to slip Jackson in down the side. And he's, you can see that he's picking on a gird because he's been booked. Real promise today from Jackson. You know, he hasn't Looks let, sharp, doesn't he? Yeah, he, he really does. He hasn't let the fact that he wasn't able to get off the mark last week at Stamford Bridge against Liverpool affect him, certainly in the play yet. And there have been some really positive things. And had it not been for a very, very tight offside, he would have won a penalty for Chelsea as well. But West Ham lead through the for the Nayef Aged goal. He's been heavily involved, Aged, in the opening exchanges. And we've had 26 minutes played. West Ham won Chelsea nil on this uh, packed sporting day I'm sure you were following the World Cup final in Sydney earlier that of course ended in disappointment for England and celebrations for Spain and we do have a, a World Cup final football daily special which is out now if you want to hear from Serena Wiegmann, Millie Bright the captain, Mary Earps as well that is available right now on BBC Sounds to download but Chelsea here dominating the possession, over 70% possession in the match so far, but they find themselves 1-0 down, as of course they did last week against Liverpool at Stamford Bridge in the opening match in the Premier League under Maurizio Pochettino, having to come from behind again. And uh, it is Chelsea with Colwell. They are parked inside West Ham territory. As you said earlier, Paul, you know, Mikel Antonio very much playing as the lone striker on his home ground. He is. You can see what David Moyes didn't want to happen today. He didn't want to get overpowered in midfield. You can see with Paqueta, Suchek, Ward-Prowse, Bowen, Ben Rama. He's trying to cram that midfield, but once Chelsea spring through that, they're oh. in, they get at the back four. Nice turn, Jackson on the edge of the area, into the box on the left. Prods it across, and it is blocked on the edge of the six-yard box. Cheers, because... Referee John Brooks slips over, everyone always loves that. Here's Chilwell to the byline, Chilwell pulls it back, only half cleared, Chukwemeka in the area, oh lovely turn, oh what a goal! Super, super goal! Carney Chukwemeka scores the first senior goal of his career and what a goal it was from the 19-year-old, brilliant skill! One foot to the other, beat the defender, right foot, curled it beyond Ariola, and it's West Ham 1, Chelsea 1, and a great moment here in the London Stadium for Carney Chukwemeka.
it's certainly been coming. Chelsea have had the lion's share of the possession, have dominated this game, and it's nothing more than they deserve. It's controlled possession again down this left side. A couple of one twos with Ben Chilwell. Chilwell does well. Zuma has a chance to clear the ball. He doesn't. He passes it straight to Chukwemeka. Cuts inside, opens himself up, opens the whole goal up, curls it around Areola. No chance for the goalkeeper. Great feet, tight space, fantastic finish. Love the way he beat Thomas Socek inside the penalty area. Now, a greatly experienced player up against a teenager. And Chuck Wemeka there just had one thing on his mind, and that was, I'm going to beat you, leave you for dead, and shoot for goal. Quality, real quality. He knew exactly what he was doing. He was calm, he was composed, showed great feet, great skill, and he only had one intention, and he executed it with perfection. So there we are, West Ham 1, Chelsea 1, don't miss that one on match of the day tonight. West Ham coming forward, as they will now have to. Bowen chests it back to the edge of the penalty area, but it, it's away for Chelsea. And Chelsea are able to take it on. And Chelsea continue on the front foot. David Moyes now standing rather stiffly with his hands on his hips. He's not dancing now, is he? He is not dancing now. No one's asking, and he's not dancing. And here's Enzo Fernandez in possession. Back to... Uh, De Sassi. and it's the Chelsea fans that you can hear down there who are enjoying their moment just like last week against Liverpool they've come back and made it 1-1 in the first half Enzo Fernandez curls a ball a stretch and away by Emerson who then got a second header in but Chelsea back in possession Gallagher and then Gusto on the right hand side Sterling's there as well 1-2 Sterling gets it back his cross to the back post Chilwell arriving with the header but got underneath it and the ball glances away out to the left hand side Chelsea again it's Colwell this time Colwell to Enzo Fernandez and uh, producing some of the tricks that we saw him last week he, he loves to play the ball from foot to foot and uh, Chelsea are all over West Ham here Enzo Fernandez again, this time towards the left-hand side, into the penalty area, looking to his left, and the cross comes in from Colwill, the central defender, to win a corner. All West, all Chelsea. Well, it's brilliant from Chelsea, really is. The ball retention's excellent. Since West Ham scored, they've offered very, very little. Chelsea have dominated the possession, they're keeping the ball, they're dragging West Ham out of positions, they're slotting the ball in between the back four. They look really, really good today, Chelsea. I mean, I watched them a number of times last year. This is a completely different team to what we saw last year already. Chelsea who have won one of their last 15 matches in all competitions. That's how, how bad it's been. In the Premier League, won five of their last 31. You know, that's that's how poor their form was almost, last season. Almost unthinkable, isn't it, for a Chelsea side? It really I is. I mean, especially away from home. You look at the way that they're playing today. They're playing attacking, free-flowing football. They only scored 18 away goals last year in 19 games. It's incredible. So, we're waiting for this Chelsea corner from the left-hand side. That is uh, swung over. Enzo Fernandez to the back post. It's glanced across the face of goal and went past the defender. And I think, yeah, referee says goal kick. Goal kick for uh, for West Ham, who have really been under the cosh, actually almost from the moment that West Ham took the lead. They did well up to that point. They create chances. They press forward. They got the goal. And they, like you say, they've really offered very, very little to nothing since the goal. They've had no ambition. They've been quite happy to sit back and trying to break up what Chelsea are doing. But to little effect. Uh, the Katarina Johnson Thompson 800 metres has been delayed. So the heptathlon 8 800 metres delayed, and it will start in about seven minutes from now. So that's when you'll hear the commentary. As uh, Bowen is caught offside and it's a free kick to Chelsea inside their own half. Uh, so that will be almost half time actually by the time that that takes place. So uh, West Ham 1, Chelsea 1, Chukwameka, he'll be in the headlines tomorrow. The, the young man who started out at Northampton Town actually, then went to Aston Villa and uh, just a handful of appearances for Aston Villa before he got that move last summer, so a year ago in the August of 2022 to Chelsea for around about £20 million but he's a young England international went to the World Cup in Argentina the Under-20 World Cup at the end of last season once his duties with Chelsea were finished and he looks like he could he could have a breakthrough season on the evidence of the two matches so far and he's got his first goal his first senior goal with, uh, with Chelsea or indeed with Aston Villa in what is his 37th senior appearance so West Ham coming forward ball on the left-hand side into the full-back position 
So, Gusto, I will have to do some defending. Pakatar takes it up again on his right foot. Pakatar hits a high ball right across from left to right to Jared Bourne, who gets the ball down. Bourne, who scored a very good goal in West Ham's opening match against Bournemouth last weekend, having scored the clinching goal at the end of the Europa Conference League final in Prague that led to all of the celebrations that we've seen today. Chelsea, though, clear it on the edge of the box, and here's Jackson again, turns, and he's away from Ward-Prowse, and he uses Sterling, and Sterling lays it back to Jackson, and Jackson in the box, pulls it back across from near the dead ball line, might have gone down there as a challenge came in on him, but he kept his feet, pulled it back, but there was no one there in Chelsea blue. The goalkeeper should have come out there, John. You know, because of the earlier incident where he misjudged it and he brought him down the penalty. The goalkeeper stayed on his line and Jackson was through one-on-one. -on -one. He actually made it to the byline, he got far too far, he shouldn't have got that far. And there was no one there, he cut it back to an empty box, but the goalkeeper made a wrong decision. I think uh, Raheem Sterling just nicked the ball back from Pakatar, who I think is, is complaining about this. I think he might be saying that Sterling used a hand in there, but uh, the assistant on the far side and referee Brooks just just saying it again and actually Raheem Sterling was gently pulling the back of Pakatar's shirt he stopped playing the ball didn't run out of play and Sterling said okay right no decision I'm going to run away with the ball and he's won a corner what's Pakatar doing I mean, you, you taught his kids you play to the whistle he's corner just stopped. corner is taken headed away comes out to the edge of the box but a slip on the edge of the box from Gusto as he tried to shoot goalwards he slipped and he actually made a right mess of it and Aston Villa were able to clear it and now uh, there's, a, there's a foul on Mikel Antonio and referee Brooks whips the yellow card out of his top pocket for Axel de Sassi for that uh, foul on Antonio free kick to West Ham inside their own half I'm still amazed at what Pakatar did then he literally just stopped and Sterling thought the game had been stopped he realised it hadn't 20 yards from goal he just takes it to the byline and crosses it in don't often say that, do you? West Ham won, Chelsea won. So foul, takes the free kick and it's headed out of play by De Sassi, who comes across. The, the goal scorer against Liverpool last week, the French World Cup player, played in the World Cup final, only for the last few seconds. And uh, I suppose it would have followed, he could have ended up taking a penalty in the shootout, but of course it didn't come to that. West Ham won, Chelsea won, West Ham throw from Solfal. Solcek tries to head it on, comes out, Pakata, lovely turn, low shot! Might have clicked the foot of the post on the way wide. Shot through a crowd of Chelsea defenders, and I think it did just clip the foot of the post. Great feat from Pakata in the, in the box, but that's what West Ham are doing, they're utilising set plays. They haven't had a sniff of a goal since their goal, and they get a long throwing down this side by Soufal throws it right into the box and Chelsea is struggling with a man marking from set plays West Ham get the ball and he's very unlucky it just trickles wide of the post yep, just clipped it clipped the foot of the post on the way past so uh, that was better but um, my experience here you know, it's, it's quite often under David Moyes you've seen this sort of game but then when in the second half very often West Ham get a bit of momentum behind themselves and uh, and come into their own but Chelsea in possession inside the West Ham half as they have been for for most of this first period on this glorious summer's afternoon summer clouds are way up there beyond the the Asalor that great big helter-skelter red wrought iron structure that we can see over the top of the roof of the stand opposite here's Gallagher Gallagher will touch back into central midfield and Enzo Fernandez now tries to pick out the pass to Sterling into the area at pace was able to get a touch and control it but it just bounced away from him and the defender was in there and goalkeeper Ariola as well what a pass by Fernandez what vision that is it's about 40 yards from goal Sterling just cuts in off that right hand side makes that run that we see across the back four darts in behind Enzo Fernandez lands it on a sixpence right on his foot he's unlucky Sterling because he controls it really well yes the the former British record holder in terms of the transfer fee involving a British club Enzo Fernandez the new one is sitting on the bench if you just switched on and you haven't heard Moises Caicedo former Brighton man named as a substitute by Maurizio Pochettino and uh, as Chelsea win the ball back Enzo Fernandez shouts that, that there might have been a handball in there from the West Ham fans but referee Brooks says no and Chelsea 
still with possession inside the West Ham half. I think, uh, as you hinted, Paul, I think everything that surrounded Caicedo over the course of the last couple of weeks or so, you know, was he going to Liverpool, was he not, where was he, <laughs> what did he want to do? And, uh, and the pressure of in, being involved in a transfer like that for a 21-year-old, you know, I think it does smack of common sense for him to be eased back in. I'll tell you what, he'll do well to get in this side the way that they play today. Mm. They've been fantastic in the midfield of Chelsea. Well, Conor Gallagher would have been, you would have thought, the, uh, the likely casualty. Might have been the youngster, might have been the teenager, Chuck Wameka. But if he's playing for his place, well, he's playing for his place very well as Chelsea have it on the halfway line. Half-time approaching, so does the 800 metres in Budapest. Chilwell playing the ball in field, they're fortunate break of the ball, back to Chilwell. Now on the edge of the area, Jackson into Chukwameka on the edge of the box, challenge on him. Uh, but the referee says, no, that was a foul by Chukwameka as he uh, as he went into the challenge on uh, Emerson, was it? Yeah, it didn't look nice at first viewing. It was one of those that we think, if we went to see the replay, but if he's gone over the top of the ball, he could be in trouble. He was just out of his reach, and he's just reached for it, and he's caught Emerson. No, he's OK, his feet are firmly on the ground. It was just a badly timed challenge. He's just on the edge of the box, he just opens up, and it just gets away from him, and he lunges in. Yeah, he did, as uh, Emerson's come out worst from that. But Chukwameka has got to his feet, and he's just feeling his left knee. It's his standing leg. Emerson's standing leg. So Chukwameka's gone across the front of him and as he's cleared it, he's hit his standing leg that's planted on the ground. So as he's done that, he's hit Emerson's standing leg and the impact's been with his feet on the ground. So not a nice one. West Ham won, Chelsea won, Emerson getting to his feet. And uh, we see Gareth Southgate is here, the England manager. And uh, he'll be naming his squad I think the weekend, the week after next for the first qualifiers. Uh, but half-time approaching here, West Ham won, Chelsea won, good game, Chelsea deserved to be back level, but as I have been building up, Katarina Johnson-Thompson could be just minutes away from a gold medal at the World Athletics Championships, Catherine Merry. The 800 metres, the final event of seven. Katarina Johnson Thompson in the gold medal position. Better of the Netherlands in silver and Anna Hall, the world leader in bronze. But Johnson Thompson and Hall are the two best 800 metre runners in this. And Anna Hall, the world leader, has to beat Katarina Johnson Thompson by three seconds to deny KJT the title, Alison Kerbishley. And Anna Hall, coming down the home straight on the first lap, has a 20 metre lead over KJT. And she's gone for it, Kath, she really has. Anna Hall looking very, very smooth, very comfortable. As she takes the bell, the clock stops at 58, 59. Katarina Johnson-Thompson is about three seconds away. Anna Hall is starting to build momentum. The cadence in her legs is starting to get faster. She approaches the back straight. Katarina Johnson-Thompson has Vitz for company. She's in second place. Can she close the gap on Anna Hall? Anna Hall down the back straight with the stars and stripes of her American leotard. Her head is rocking and rolling. It's easier to chase. 200 metres to go in the heptathlon world championship. Katarina Johnson is Thompson is starting to pull this one back. Anna Hall's looking over her shoulder. She's struggling here, the American. KJT is digging deep. She must be two seconds behind the American. 100 metres to go. Anna Hall, she is tired. KJT, 10 metres behind. This is going to be very, very close. But I think Katarina Johnson-Thompson, 10 metres behind Anna Hall, is going to be the world champion here in Budapest again. Anna Hall stops the clock at 2.04. KJT is less than two seconds behind. Katarina Johnson-Thompson has repeated what she did in 2019 and is the world champion in the heptathlon. We quickly refresh the screens to see the result. You're right, Catherine, she reeled it in. That was such a sensible run from Katarina Johnson-Thompson. Anna Hall had to do everything. She had to go from the gun. And we are now confirmed now, Katarina Johnson-Thompson, second place, but well within the grasp of Anna Hall. 6,740 points, 20 points better than Anna Hall who picks up the silver. Career threatening injuries between the last medal in 2019 and the victory now means that KJT is in tears, collapsed on the track. You are world champion again, Katarina Johnson-Thompson.
Well done, Katarina Johnson Thompson, Catherine Mary, and Alison Kerbishley, the five live commentary team in Budapest. And while she was winning the gold medal for Britain, we've had drama here. The score is still West Ham 1, Chelsea 1, but Chelsea have missed a penalty, or more correctly, Alphonse Ariola saved it. It was won by Raheem Sterling, a burst into the penalty area from the left-hand side this time. Challenge from Socek was right on the edge of the box, but just inside. John Brooks called it right, the referee. And Enzo Fernandez, who's yet to score for Chelsea, stepped up as the penalty taker. And Ariola went the right way to his right and kept it out. Paul Robinson. Yeah, it was a really poor penalty, John, wasn't it? Listen, it's any penalty that doesn't go in is a poor penalty. But it was one of those stuttering run-ups off a small run-up off a couple of steps. Mid-height, goalkeeper's right hand side. It was a very easy save for Ariola because he chose the right way. Ooh, Emerson in there. That was that was a that was a very firm challenge by Emerson on Raheem Sterling who who has gone down and, and a number of the players have now got involved there and there's a little bit of pushing and shoving, nothing serious but that was a very, very firm challenge by Emerson uh, and I think Sterling's OK yeah, he's up on his feet now in amongst all of that crowd of Claret and Blue and Chelsea Royal Blue and uh, just be interesting to see what John Brooks does here he, he's, he's clearly speaking to uh, his colleagues who were watching the VAR and uh, and he sent them away and it looks as though it's just going to be a free kick actually I beg his pardon it, it was uh, yes it was Emerson and that was that was a that was a very physical challenge by Emerson there on Sterling that was a challenge of a man who's fed up of running around after somebody all afternoon <laughs> that was worth the yellow card wasn't it it certainly was and he's clattered into him yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not a challenge that you know endangers him. Here's Chilwell into the area on the left-hand side. Chilwell taking it towards the dead ball line, but defender so far was there, and West Ham are able to clear. You know, it wasn't one of those like studs up or waist high. It was just the, the power of it. It was a physical challenge that took Sterling out. It was a proper old-fashioned tackle, wasn't it? It yeah. was. Uh, <laughs> we'd have seen that many years ago in the game quite often. Um, we don't often see it these days. But going back to the penalty, I'm just really disappointed with the execution of the penalty. I mean, you know, it's, it's it's easy to say after the event, but the goalkeeper made a decent save, but it was a comfortable save. But I don't think he helped himself with his run-up, the shortness of it, the stutteriness of it. And it was a real opportunity for Chelsea to go in at half-time, 2-1 up. 24th time Raheem Sterling has won a penalty. But it was the right decision. It was oh, a good decision. So checked right on the edge, but just inside, I felt. No qualms whatsoever. It was a definite penalty. Yeah. But, uh, you know, interesting choice, Enzo Fernandez, yet to get off the mark for Chelsea, but clearly the choice of Mauricio Pochettino as his penalty taker. But uh, Ariola making the save, as Paul Robinson says, at a good, good height, diving to his right, wasn't in the corner, wasn't just inside the post. It was closer to the centre of the goal. And here is Sterling, he's had a bright Brilliant. game. Oh, lovely run, into the box, plays oh, it across, Chukwameka misses it, Chilwell shoots, that's blocked on the edge of the penalty area. And Chukwameka has blotted his copybook there, having scored a super goal there. He was nutmegged by the cutback. As West Ham concede a free kick, Pakatar has conceded a free kick in the middle of his half for a foul on Enzo Fernandez. That was absolutely brilliant by Raheem Sterling. So quick. That was Raheem Sterling of old, what we used to see him. He's taken out five players in one run. He did nothing. There's no trick or anything. He just opens the ball up, accelerates, goes past five West Ham defenders, cuts it back and Chuck Wameka up completely through his legs, four yards from goal. Ball ends up with Chilwell at the far post. It's on his right foot. It's difficult because West Ham have got bodies back on the line. But Chuck Wameka again, should have made it 2-1. But it is West Ham 1, Chelsea 1. This is Five Live in the World Service from the BBC. Enzo Fernandez takes the free kick out to the right-hand side where it's crossed by Gusto, with Gusto, into uh, Ward Prowse, who blocks it out for a throw down the right-hand side. Six minutes of added time. So if you've just joined us, Katarina Johnson-Thompson has just won gold at the World Athletics in the heptathlon. Zarnell Hughes will go for a second gold of the day for Great Britain later and we will have commentary and more on that at half time from our team in Budapest but the corner for Chelsea is swung in and Ariola comes and gets a punch on that and uh, is able to deflect it out for a corner on the other side he's had an eventful afternoon hasn't he Ariola <laughs>
I think like the, the rest of the West Ham side and the manager they'll be very very much looking forward to getting in at half time they won't have wanted to see six minutes of injury time they've been completely outplayed in this first half apart from two chances that they've had from set plays more as well at half time on Aston Villa's 4-0 win over Everton that was comprehensive as we were listening in the commentary earlier with Ian Dennis and Clinton Morrison Chelsea take this corner short into the near side of the area to Jackson and then back it goes to Chuk Wameka who could easily have got his second goal a few moments ago then Sterling goes down rather easily against Pakatar who incidentally was yellow carded for his descent earlier so Pakatar is uh, on a booking in this match but he's won a throw, throw in for West Ham here also earlier Norwich City 3-1 winners against Millwall I see Jonathan Rowe scored again for, for Norwich in that match Hearts and Hibs are through in the League Cup uh, and will be involved in their European matches uh, this coming midweek and Celtic are out beaten 1-0 by Kilmarnock so more on all of that at half time but it's been an eventful first half here at the London Stadium the first match of the new stadium of uh, the new season here and Thiago Silva playing the ball back to his goalkeeper Robert Sanchez who's not had an awful lot to do after conceding the early goal because it's been all Chelsea and here they come again in the fifth minute at the end of the first half Chilwell again up to the edge of the area Chukwameka into the box that's cleared away by Socek who's just caught there by Chilwell who stepped into it and caught him and it's a free kick and Mauricio Pochettino has uh, has just turned away to I think he might have dropped his water bottle or something or Kevin Nolan is cut what was that about they'll be glad of the break West Ham they really will I mean, it can't come at a better time for them. They've not been disruptive enough. They've just sat back. They've allowed Chelsea possession. They've allowed them the ball. Chelsea should be two, three, and they've had the chances. They should be two or three up, and they've had the chances to do so. Yep. David Moyes has got to get his team in at half time, regroup, send them out with some new ideas because the way that the game is at the moment, they're just sitting there waiting to be beaten. Yeah. Sent them out with more gusto, although he's on the other <laughs> side, isn't he? Uh, Chukwemeka has just sat down and we'll need some uh, some treatment so this will delay things a little further I'm not sure what happened there when Kevin Nolan and Mauricio Pochettino walked all the way back and the technical area is a long way from the actual claret seat and uh, oh, Pochettino threw down a water bottle and Kevin Nolan kindly walked out picked it up and put the lid on it and gave it back to Pochettino I'm trying to it's like um, it's like charades John Southall our <laughs> producer here today is sort of motioning he threw the lid he threw the lid of the bottle down how how angry must you be to throw the lid down <laughs> I'm furious I can't understand why he's angry his team have been superb this first half I wish I hadn't started that <laughs> West Ham won Chelsea won Chukwameka is still sitting on the pitch but uh I think this has been significantly better from Chelsea last week. Yeah, this is it's an improvement again on last week. I think there was times in the game where the manager would have been pleased with them, and there's times in the game last week where he'd have been disappointed in them. But I think they're all round performance here for 45. Well, what we're in now, 52 minutes, whatever it is, with the new added time that we're into. I think they've played really well as a whole. I think the ball retention's been excellent. They've dominated possession. Sterling's been significantly better. I thought he was looks quite a rusty player. last week. Looks a different player. And, uh, and I think what was interesting, you know, we were told in advance that Gareth Southgate was going to be here watching this game and Raheem Sterling who's not played for England since the World Cup so if we knew Gareth Southgate was going to be here dot 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 Raheem Sterling probably knew uh, you, you don't get to find out as players unless you have a little look up to the director's box when you're playing you don't you're not privy to that type of information but yeah Maybe it's a no coincidence, coincidence is there Maybe it's a coincidence. <laughs> well Chukwameka now this is a little bit of a worry now because uh, actually a boogie's now being sent on with a stretcher on top of it and let's hope that this is not another nasty injury here and it seemed quite innocuous didn't it did didn't it he's up he's on his feet well hob hobbling off uh, it's, a, it's it's a problem with either foot it's certainly left leg because he is he's been it was his left knee that was being treated by the physio and uh and he is he's hopping off the doesn't, field doesn't look a good one does this it? does not look good this 19 year old young England player scored his first senior goal today super goal as well played well in both matches having been picked to start by Maurizio Pochettino at the start of his time with Chelsea 
and uh, and now he's he is now walking. Now he's reached the side. He's been he's been supported by the uh, the medical people, the physios on either side, and he is now putting a little bit of weight on that leg on his left knee and he disappears down the tunnel as uh, play resumes that's a real shame he's been the best player on the pitch in this first half he really has I've enjoyed watching him yeah I thought he was close to man of the match last week and uh, the ball's out of play for a throw into Chelsea halfway inside their own half so uh, Chelsea are going to have to make a change and Mikhailo Mudrik is actually being called forward that's certainly not what you'd call a like for like swap and after the long stoppage there, we are now into the ninth minute of added time at the end of the first half. West Ham 1, Chelsea 1, BBC Radio live here from the London Stadium on this summer's afternoon. It's got a real, real mellow feel actually when played stopped there and there's just the conversation, the murmur of conversation going on around the ground. And Mudrick actually doesn't get on at the end of the first half because the whistle has gone. And uh, there we are, West Ham 1, Chelsea 1. And they packed a lot into that first half. West Ham taking the lead through the Agard header in the seventh minute from James Ward-Prowse's corner. But uh, but Chelsea then really dominating it after that. Could have been a penalty had Jackson not been caught offside by VAR before he was brought down. Eventually, the now injured Carney Chukwameka scored a super goal to make it 1-1. And then Raheem Sterling in the latter part of the half, while we were listening to what was happening in Budapest, Sterling won a penalty. But Enzo Fernandez chosen to take it, so it's saved by Ariola. So there we are, Paul Robinson. I've been really impressed with Chelsea and the way that they've played this first half. I know we talk about transition, we talk about the new manager coming in and new players, but they look like they've settled. I mean, the, the formation that they're playing with the three at the back, the midfield three of Gallagher, Fernandez, and Chukwameka, who for me, until his injury, was the best player in the park. They had the opportunities to be two or three up. They should have got Chukwameka had an open goal, the missed penalty. They've, they've really impressed me this first half of Chelsea. West Ham on the flip side of that, after their goal, they offered very, very little. They had a couple of opportunities from set plays, and that looks like their best route in, if they're going to get something, you know, win this game. The home supporters are going to want more from West Ham in the second half. That is for sure. And at half time here, it's West Ham 1, Chelsea 1. We'll, uh, we'll see if we can find out what's happened to, to Carney Chukwameka because you could see he went down, got back up, instantly realised that, that all wasn't well having scored that goal. But, but Paul Robinson, what about Raheem Sterling? His performance feels like the, the story of the first half. That's more that, that we're used to seeing from him in an England shirt. Really was, Steve, yeah. I mean, he was really impressive in the partnership that he's got with Nicholas Jackson. They seem to have an understanding already. You know, when, when they get the possession, Sterling looks up and before he'd turn around and try and ball retention, try and keep possession, today he's very direct. First thought is forward, whether it's him carrying the ball or him playing the ball through. He really has been impressive. His runs and he's been really creative and he's looked a threat every time he's got the ball. Guys, thank you very much for the time being. Uh, second half commentary, of course, from the London Stadium of West Ham versus Chelsea. But these are the sounds of Budapest. We've had tears of all types in British sport this afternoon. Heartbreak for the Lionesses in the World Cup final, but tears of joy for Katerina Johnson-Thompson winning gold at the World Championships in the heptathlon. So let's head back there now. Ali Kerbishley and Catherine Murray, of course, there for us. She's just been crowned, literally, <laughs> Catherine. Quite literally. I don't know whether it was a mum that bought the plastic crown in, you know, in optimism, but the multi-eventers are on their usual lap of honour because there's such camaraderie between them all and once Katarina Johnson-Thompson had peeled herself off the track because she was so emotional, she collapsed in a heap, she was crying because it means so much, she did an infield interview saying it's a dream, I can't believe it because her career was threatened by injury over the past few years so I'm looking across, I can't see the crown at the moment but she's a <laughs> modest lass, Katarina Johnson-Thompson, isn't she Alison? So I don't think she'll wear it on the whole lap of honour. No, I think you're right. Right, Kath. She does. She doesn't. She doesn't take plaudits very well, does she? Um, but yeah, she'll find that very odd. Now I think she's taken it off and she's got it in her hand now. But you're absolutely right. I mean, Steve. Honestly, I've never seen her so emotional. She's been very vocal about how tough these last two days have been. She actually just said that on the, her infield interview to the crowd. She said she credits all of the heptathletes because they've had a tough two days. They started in an electric storm yesterday and they were delayed an hour. And when you've already got two days, seven events ahead of you, to be told that you've got to wait an hour is so difficult, especially when the first event is so explosive and technical in the hurdles. So they had to wait till the electric storm had, had sort of passed through. Uh, the rain had stopped and then she came out onto the track a very, very 
I mean, she even said it was a weird hurdles. Uh, you know, we were all starting to get a little bit worried. She didn't look herself uh, into the next, the high jump. Yes, she was uh, equal first there, but 186, nowhere near her best. And I think we were all starting to just think if she can get a medal, that's good. But honestly, overnight, she said she's had three hours sleep. She's back here today, a different athlete. And wow, you know, two personal bests in the javelin and then the 800. That's how you do it to become world champion. And, and as you guys will, will both know, n nobody more so than your fellow athletes will understand how bad the bad times can be. And, you know, when, when she went down with that injury during the the heptathlon in Tokyo and the, the emotions that she would have felt there. You can see there's almost sort of a communal atmosphere of, of support. I don't know if that's unique to this event or not, but, but it, it really comes through. Yeah, there's a level of respect throughout all the events, Steve, in athletics, but the multi-events seem to have something special. As I'm answering this question, all of the heptathletes are walking now in front of us. Katerina Johnson-Thompson is waving. I can see her smile from here. I think you could probably see it from the moon. She's draped <laughs> in the Union flag. They have an instant medal, Steve, put around their neck on the track because the medal plaza's in a different place. But she is absolutely delighted. And the respect that you mentioned with all of the medalists in this heptathlon has been huge. And they're all pausing every two, three metres. The, the crowd who are able, Steve, are on their feet applauding all of the heptathletes and all of the medalists in particular. And she said before the event, Ali, that she would just be delighted with a medal. So to come away with gold, that's why she's saying it's a dream. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you touched on those injuries in Tokyo, but that, that reverses back all the way to 2020, COVID year. Um, a lot of people having to, to deal with COVID, but then she ruptured her Achilles. And for any athlete, that's bad. But for an heptathlete, when you've got seven events, power, strength, you know, you, you, you become very timid. You become very worried when you've done something as serious as a ruptured Achilles. And I think we all started to question, would we see Katerina Johnson-Thompson again? A lot of people questioned her desire because she's not a very vivacious. She doesn't come out. She's not, she's not a big character. And, and a lot of people you know, read that, that she doesn't enjoy athletics. You know, this girl was born to be an athlete. And I think what she's proved to me is she's legendary in the sport now. Any athlete that can come and do it again, not just the year after or two years after to retain, but to lose your world title and then to come back four years after with all of the injuries she's gone through. I think, you know, especially a year out from Paris, that will make a lot of noises what she's been able to do here. Uh, Ali, Catherine, thank you very much for the time being. In just over half an hour's time, we will bring you the men's 100 metre final. Zarnell Hughes of Great Britain trying to become the first British male sprinter to win an individual medal at the World's or Olympics since 2003 when it was Darren Campbell. So we could have more history yet this afternoon on Five Live Sport. We'll wrap up all of the day's big sports stories. Uh, we'll hear from Mary Earps after England's World Cup final defeat as well. All after the news on Five Live with Joe Critcher. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. The England captain, Millie Bright, says England gave everything and they're absolutely heartbroken after losing the Women's World Cup final. They were beaten by Spain 1-0. There's been criticism Prince William and the Prime Minister didn't travel to Sydney to watch the game. Russia's first moon mission in almost 50 years has failed. Its Luna 25 spacecraft spun out of control and smashed into the moon. It was set to explore a part of the moon which scientists think could hold frozen water and precious elements. The parents of the TV presenter Phil Spencer have been killed in a car crash near Canterbury in Kent. The TV presenter, who hosts Location, 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 confirmed Anne and David Spencer died after their vehicle toppled off a bridge and fell into a river. And Waitrose and John Lewis are offering free hot drinks to on-duty police officers in a bid to deter shoplifters, but they have to bring a reusable cup. It comes as shops report rising levels of retail crime. On BBC iPlayer. My wedding got cancelled by the apocalypse. Well, human civilization also got cancelled, so that sort of puts your wedding into perspective. How dare you put my wedding into perspective? A hen party gone wild. You need to catch up, love. All the fellas have cocked it. You might be the last man alive. I want to be set free. I should be taking charge. Hand over the man. Mm. Hen pocalypse. You know what? This actually isn't the worst Hindu I've been on. Watch on BBC iPlayer. This 
is Five Live Sports with Steve Crossman on Five Live. Listen on BBC Sounds. West Ham won, Chelsea won in the Premier League. Second half commentary on the way. Let's get more reaction to England's World Cup final defeat, though. Mo- goalkeeper Mary Earp saved a penalty from Jennifer Amoso in the second half, but unsurprisingly, it's no consolation for her. I feel like I just try and go out and, and do my job for the team and give give everything, leave everything on the pitch. But the team result is the is the most important thing, really. And um, yeah, we couldn't get that today. A step closer, the tournament as a whole, the nation has followed you, the nation has backed you. I'd imagine it's going to take a couple of weeks to sort of soak in all of that, but you can go home with your heads held high. Yeah, as I say, I think I think in a couple of weeks when, when the emotions kind of settle down, we can look back and be proud of what we achieved. You know, it's no small feat to get to a, to a World Cup final. Yeah, but right now we're obviously very competitive people and yeah, we, we, we came here to... to to win the game and, and get a gold medal, not a silver one. But um, at the same time, I think you just have to try and be as present and as grateful as you can for these moments because they don't come around often. And I'll probably, yeah, I'll probably look back on this as, as probably one of, you know, up there with one of my career highlights. But right now, it just doesn't feel like it. And just finally, when you saved that penalty, it was a great moment in the game. Did you hope that was going to give you the platform to then go down the other end, equalise and take it from there? Yeah, I felt like it gave us a little bit of momentum. Um, yeah, but we just couldn't find the equaliser, really. That's the England goalkeeper, Mary Earps. There'll be more reaction on the Football Daily podcast. In the Scottish League Cup, big shot Kilmarnock have knocked out Celtic. They beat them today by a goal to nil. Uh, Hibs beat Wraith Rovers 2-1 and Hearts were 4-0 with us over Partick Thistle. So they all go into the quarterfinals. Norwich beat Millwall 3-1 in the Championship. In the Premier League, Aston Villa bounced back from last weekend's heavy defeat to Newcastle uh, to thump Everton 4-0 at Villa Park. Here's their manager, Unai Emery. After the first match... uh... We were speaking, uh, trying to to meet seriously about uh, our, our match last week and and how we we want to to build to create a team and and try to to find our, our way uh, finding the performance, but uh, uh, without a structure and without a style playing. And I think we respond very well here yeah, today. And with our support uh, here in Villa Park, I think it was brilliant uh, that Morfair we we create and we connect with them, they connect with us, and then we play it. And I think the the supporters here they are understanding as well how, how we want to to build a team, how we want to to create our, our style, to try to be strong, uh, uh, playing in, in in the in the area we are we are we are creating, and uh, the result at the end was the consequences of it. Villa boss Unai Emery. So back-to-back defeats for Everton. They haven't scored a goal yet this season either. Striker Dominic Calvert-Lewin went off with a facial injury after colliding with Villa goalkeeper Emmy Martinez. Here's Sean Dyche. Yeah, well, firstly, I mean, look, Cal- Calvin, uh, Dom, Dom, sorry, he's, he's worked very hard to get to where he's got to. He's got a knock on his cheek. It's not concussion, so we're pleased about that one. Um, he's having that checked out. And his, his vision was blurry. You know, you can't, he, he wasn't right to carry on. So we had to make that decision. Alex has seemingly pulled his hamstring, which is not ideal either. And of course, look, there's a lot of challenges here. There has been since I've got it. Um, the challenges keep coming thick and fast. That's part of being a manager. That's part of football. Uh, we can't correct all of it. You know, we haven't got pots of gold to correct all of it. We are actively trying to correct certain things, but deals are difficult to come by. That is Sean Dyche. So all of that means loads to get into on 606 tonight. The lines are open. 08085 909 693. Call now. Book in to speak to Chris Sutton and Robbie Savage. Afternoon, Chris. Hello, Steve. What are you, what are you going for? There's so much to get through. Oh, there is. Um, Aston Villa were really impressive, uh, weren't they? Responding well after getting thumped by Newcastle uh, last week. A lot of high hopes for Aston Villa after their end to last season, I suppose. So I want to hear from Villa fans. Everton, what a mess. I, I thought they were actually good last week, Steve, against Fulham, but didn't have that finishing touch, did they? But today, I thought they were miles off at woeful, worrying signs for uh, for Sean Dyche. So, you, you know, he said he's got a lot of challenges there. I think that's an understatement. So Everton fans want to hear from them, Steve. And um, I feel like just national kind of consolation on the World Cup, you, everyone can kind of, yeah, you know, help each oh, other out. Yeah, um, absolutely. Real sickener, wasn't it? Uh, I thought Mary Oaks was absolutely brilliant. I've, I've got to say, Steve, I thought Spain were the better team. I yeah. think most people, you know, would admit that. But I, I think that the, the team can come home with the heads held high. Uh, I suppose we could question, did Serena Wiegmann get her substitutes right? I, I suppose sort of being analytical with it. 
but over the piece, I think that, uh, that that England have been fantastic. You seem to have missed out one big story in Scotland, Chris. <laughs> you seem to have missed out uh, something we've got there. A, well, did, did you, there's a story in Norfolk as well, Norwich City emerging. No, that's not the one. I was no. a bit, bit, yeah, bit further north well, of there, Chris. Yeah, no, ha happy to talk about that, of course. <laughs> uh, Brendan Rodgers, seven from seven, wasn't it? His trophy count domestically when he was last manager. Well, he's out of the League Cup already. Um, want to hear from Celtic fans. I thought Celtic didn't do it or haven't done enough work uh, in the window up until now. They've lost Jota. Uh, he's gone to Saudi Arabia to play. He was, you know, a really key player for them. Carter Vickers injured. They've let Carl Starfeld go. They were the sort of rock at centre-halves for, uh, for, uh, for Celtic over the last couple of seasons. What about Kilmarnock, Chris, as Kil well? They've yes, beaten Celtic they were, and yes, Rangers. Uh, that's, that's incredible. And Derek McInnes, uh, I think at the start of the season, talked about making that next step. Yeah. And that, uh, you know, that was the next step for them this season. They've done it. And we're, what, we're still in August. There you go. There's the scene set. 0808 609 Cheers, Chris. Have a good Cheers, one. Cheers, Steve. Thank you. Chris Sutton, he'll be with Robbie Savage for 606. Once we are done at the London Stadium. So second half commentary now of West Ham versus Chelsea with Paul Robinson and correspondent John Murray. Thank you, Steve. And uh, welcome back inside the London Stadium where the bubbles are being pumped out again. Chelsea are out there waiting. It's almost as if Paul Robinson, they can't wait to get at them again, Chelsea. Well, they certainly didn't want the half-time whistle, did they? They were dominating this West Ham side. They were really good in the first half, the way they kept the ball, the chances that they created. Jackson and Sterling, I mean, Raheem Sterling looks like a different player. Yeah, he's been uh, very, very good. Raheem Sterling, a dramatic improvement on what we saw from him this time last week against Liverpool. And uh, Mikhailo Mudrik is now coming on for Chelsea at the start of the second half to replace the unfortunate Carney Chukwameka, who seems to have injured his left knee. We'll have more on that from Mauricio Pochettino when we speak to him later when he comes on to 6 or 6. But uh, it is West Ham 1, Chelsea 1, Mudrik coming on, so the feeling will be that Maybe Chelsea will go 3-4-3, but the West Ham team the same. Ariola in goal, Tufal, Zuma, Aguerd and Emerson. As the second half begins, West Ham kick off in the Claret and Blue. And then in midfield, Ward-Prowse, Socek and Pakita with Bowen, Antonio and Ben Rama. Aguerd scored the opening goal for West Ham early on in the match from a Ward-Prowse corner. And Chelsea's team now, Sanchez in goal. The three central defenders, De Sassi, Thiago Silva and Colwell. Gusto on the right with James out injured. Chilwell on the left. And then uh, Fernandez and Gallagher in the middle. And Mikhailo Mudrik does seem to have taken up a, a leftish position. And in fact, here he is now jumping onto the ball. But Pakatar was fouled by Gallagher before he did that. And that is a free kick to West Ham in their own centre circle. So Mudrick, Sterling and Jackson. And uh, England goalkeeper Paul Robinson's watching it with us. Certainly an attacking change, bringing Mudrick on. You know, we talked about Chelsea's dominance in the first half, just not been able to convert the chances. With Chuck Omeka going off, you would maybe expect Caicedo to have come on, to a proper midfielder to have come on. But they've put Mudrick up there and it looks like him, Sterling and Jackson will be the front three. So Chelsea defending the end to our left. So West Ham will be playing from right to left in the second half. They're defending the Sir Trevor Brooking stand and he is here, the great man, Sir Trevor. Don't know whether you've had too much to do with Trevor over the years, Paul, but one of the one of the great guys of football. He used, to be in the, he used to sit in the summarizer's chair with us regularly in my early days. And a true gentleman. Absolutely. Tra Travelled uh, all over with us with the FA and with the England squads. And he was just would. a pleasure to be around. Yeah, and of course, as well, on this day, one of the real architects of St George's Park, Trevor Brooking, was one of the, the strongest advocates that England needs somewhere like St George's Park. And that, I feel, has had a great deal to do with the, the success of all of the England teams. And he's a, a font of knowledge. He's the man that you never, ever get tired of listening and are asking him things about football. Well, it was Trevor Brooking who scored the goal the last time West Ham won anything, a major trophy, until Jared Bowen scored that goal in Prague. Here's Chelsea coming forward, Sterling into the box, and then it was cleared away by West Ham. He was looking for Jackson inside the area. Quite a quiet start to the second half, two minutes played, and then Antonio De Sassi uh, 
puts the challenge in on him, but referee Brooks says no, it was a foul by Antonio on De Sassi, free kick Chelsea. He was clever there, Antonio, he used his strength on De Sassi, and it looked like it was a foul for the West Ham player, but actually knocked De Sassi off balance first, and he used that as his advantage to try and get round the back of him. But West Ham have got to be better this half. I mean, we know they got the goal early on in the first half, but since then they've just been sat there and allowed Chelsea far too much possession. They have to be disruptive, they can't allow them to have that much dominance in the game. Yes, caught out, Antonio cheeky <laughs> he's uh, he's got plenty to say for himself hasn't he not least on the football footballers podcast I was watching Callum Wilson last weekend he has his partner Mikel Antonio latest one of those is available from uh, BBC Sounds and it has competition now I noticed from football firsts with Jermaine Defoe and Troy Deeney so they're all at it as West Ham win a free kick halfway inside their own half James Ward-Prowse is fouled and ironic cheers from the West Ham fans who clearly feel that uh, there's not enough going their way after that earlier foul that was given against uh, Antonio yeah, I think the referee's done reasonably well today. I think he's handled the game fairly well. He's booked players that needed to be booked. And I think he's made big decisions and he's got them right. Slightly confused there. I'll explain in a moment. Here is Gallagher. Gallagher through to Jackson. Now into the area on the right. Sterling pulls it across. Jackson couldn't get there. The ball bounced obligingly for West Ham into the path of Thomas Solcek, who was able to clear it away. West Ham still being penned in there. Pakatar, who's on a yellow card. And uh, Gallagher is trying to wind him up. Uh, Pakatar doesn't bite and wins a throw-in halfway inside his own half. As you were talking there, rather, rather confusingly, massive screens at either end of the London Stadium. Suddenly, your name flashed up on this. <laughs> Did you see that? I've seen that before advertising uh, a local firm. <laughs> it's a local <laughs> solicitor, I think it was. I thought, what's that on there for? <laughs> no relation? Oh, not that I know of. No, good. As uh, Pakatar plays it forward, and now... It's Ben Rama into the area. The angle's tight. Oh, and he shoots right across the face of goal and beyond the far post. Big chance. Or oh, did the flag belatedly go up? Or did it? If it did, it was only very briefly. And uh, he was offside. He was offside. He would have been. We're just seeing the pictures, Paul. Yeah, simple ball over the top from Pakatar. And he puts Ben Rama through one on one. And it was one of those where everybody in the stadium and I think even the players knew he was offside but with the laws of the way they are they have to continue and play the play the play out if you like yes we didn't need solicitor Paul Robinson <laughs> to decide on that one West Ham won Chelsea won is the score on our second Premier League commentary of the day but of course we brought you live from Sydney the events in the World Cup final and then Birmingham, Aston Villa, we heard from Unai Emery at half-time. Really good win for them. I actually thought they played quite well against Newcastle last week, but lost 5-1, but excellent result for them. And now, level at 1-1 here. Pacatado to Ward-Prowse, who shoots from distance, but that was blocked on the edge of the area. Thiago Silva just stood up, blocked it away, and it bounces back towards the halfway line. West Ham take up possession again. David Moyes will have... As Paul Robinson's been saying, demanded more from his team in the second half. And this is better. Zuma, the captain now for West Ham, now that Declan Rice is gone, fires a long ball forward. That's cleared away. But only back to Tsofal. And Tsofal loses out, actually, and it's being brought forward now for Chelsea. Up towards Jackson. Jackson flicks it back. Here's Mudrik, the Ukrainian international. Blonde haired, involved properly for the first time. Out to the left hand side. Chilwell back to Mudrik. Then Chilwell again. Infield. Gallagher's now onto this. He's 30 yards out. Has a look at goal. Gallagher though plays it square to Enzo Fernandez, who missed the penalty in the first half or saved by Ariola. Then a, a little ball from Mudrik to the edge of the penalty area. Stabbed away by Jackson. West Ham dwelt on that, didn't take their opportunity to clear, so Jackson said, thanks very much, we'll have it back. Chelsea with Chilwell on the left. Mudrick makes a run down into the full-back position. Mudrick then turns it back. Jackson turns, faces the goal. Chilwell's there, quite central. Chilwell dives into the challenge, and Socek is able to turn, take the ball away, and Pakatar passes it out to the right, but passes it straight out of play. Chelsea throw. You can tell that's something David Moyes has said at half-time. Chelsea were picking holes in this West Ham defence far too easily. They were finding gaps far too easily in the first half. As soon as West Ham lose possession now, they're straight back into a shape. They're very, very hard to break down. Yeah, 1-1 one, one the score. Chelsea who equalised through Carney Chukwemeka. Very good goal. Watch that on match of the day two tonight. Or indeed the programme anytime on the 
on the eye player. Lines open for 606 on 5 Live 08, 0859, 08, 0963. As Chelsea break away down the left hand side, the ball will cross it. It's far too close to uh, Ariola, who is able to take that comfortably. Colwell, it was the left sided central defender with the cross too close to the goalkeeper. Uh, they did well there, Chelsea. They pulled the West Ham players out of possession. Just as I was saying, how good that West Ham were at regrouping and getting in position. Chelsea attacked down the left hand side, pulled Kufal completely out of position, and he found himself in acres of space. West Ham with Ben Rama, but uh, in steps De Sassi, but then it's played by Ward Prowse, and Antonio could be away here on the edge of the box. Antonio! What a super finish that is as well! From the angle, just inside the area, and he hit that so well and low across Sanchez into the far bottom corner and astonishingly really West Ham are now in front 2-1 well that goal tells you everything about Antonio that's what he does he's powerful and he's got such a good strike on him he gets the ball he's through he's almost one-on-one -on -one, but he's too far out he's got nobody around him he's got no support he muscles his way through the defenders gets past Thiago Silva keeps Colwell away from him gets just inside the box and he smashes a shot across Sanchez right into the bottom right hand corner it's almost that he's been closed down by the centre half he just opens it up out of his feet and he finds that bottom corner great power great strength great physical ability and then to find a shot from where he did that's a fantastic finish it really is James Ward-Prowse with the pass to him so that's another assist for Ward-Prowse although Antonio had a heck of a lot to do to uh, to make the most of that but make the most of it he did and that is a truly powerful right foot finish and this is exactly how the first half panned out now David Moyes from his his point of view he won't want to see his team sit back now and let happen what happened in the first half West Ham have come out they've started really well in this second half you can see that they've started well because they're pressing a lot higher up the pitch they're not allowing Chelsea possession and they've got the rewards early on in the second half so great feeling for Antonio great celebration as well the way he wheeled away punching the air leaping up and and West Ham lead Chelsea by two goals to one ahead for the second time in the match but with everything that's happened since West Ham took the lead the first time round I mean this is this is an almost almost can't believe that West Ham have got themselves into this position but Antonio his first goal of this season having been the top scorer last season with his 14 goals in all competitions which was his personal best in a West Ham shirt and now of course at the age of 33 Mudrick for Chelsea turns away in the middle of the half slips the ball through for Jackson but just slightly overhit Jackson trying to race onto it and Emerson actually came across just to do enough and Ariola was able to slide out and take the ball it's a difficult ball that what Mudrick's tried to play it's too straight on that angle he's had players each side of him it's been a lot easier to slip it slip it to one of the wide players on the left too straight goalkeeper makes the right decision comes out and swallows it up Chelsea gonna have to do it all again I mean they did well in the first half like we said but West Ham give them a lot of credit they've started this second half with some real intent they knew they couldn't play the same way great noise now inside the stadium it's not like a, a Saturday afternoon fate anymore in here they're enjoying themselves they're singing their West Ham songs they're uh, goading the Chelsea fans there who must be sitting wondering how on earth are we not <laughs> at least level in this match the Chelsea fans well they've had the chances the women how they're not level how they're not winning mm. and how the West Ham fans are champions we're champions of Europe at them champions of Europe we're champions of the third tier competition in Europe <laughs> as De Sassi plays the ball across but I have to say you know I'm, I'm, a little bit of fun there but I think you know the trophy's there and I know people will say and West Ham certainly were one of the strongest clubs in that competition but how many of our in inverted commas clubs have played in the, the lesser competition or competitions and you think well they'll have every chance of winning it and then they don't they they for whatever reason they don't come through and win it and West Ham did when you look at that last season you know everybody talks about that now European trophy in West Ham's cabinet how many clubs <laughs> I can think of a very big one that I played for down the road <laughs> would swap the season that West Ham had last year they're in the UEFA Cup this year they're in the Europa League sorry they've got a European trophy in the cabinet and they're in Europe again this year I mean it's a fantastic season it's a great achievement well it's not for me to say but 
I think this could be quite interesting in terms of what happens in the remainder of this match over half an hour to go. West Ham winning Chelsea 2-1 uh, against Chelsea and is that Caicedo it is who is getting himself ready so Mauricio Pochettino decides that now 2-1 down it's time to turn and call for his £115 million man from Brighton. The 21-year-old is preparing himself. He's putting on his match shirt, which is number 25. And we will see him come onto the field very shortly. He's still sitting on the, on the claret cushioned seat down there in the Chelsea dugout. But he will be onto the field with probably about half an hour to play by the time he comes on. Chelsea 2-1 down. I mean, really, what Chelsea have to do is keep doing the same things, Paul. Yeah, they did so well in the first half without repeating ourselves. But in the second half, I said that West Ham have to find a way. They have to do something to disrupt this Chelsea team. They've not just disrupted them, they've imposed their self on them. They've imposed their own style on it. And, you know, it's, they've reaped the fr fruits of their labour. Antonio scored a fantastic goal. And even now, they clearly learnt a lesson from the first half. When they went the goal down, they haven't sat back. They haven't just, you know, just been submissive with possession. They've been good. West Ham 2, Chelsea 1, 5 Live and the World Service from the BBC. Sterling has gone quiet in the second half. This is a decent run though and he was fouled, he was clipped, went down, went sprawling down. Emerson with the challenge, he was on a yellow card and Sterling goes down and wins the free kick, maybe three or four, maybe five yards outside the right corner of the box. I think it was, a, it was rather closer actually where the foul initially happened but they've brought it back a little direct Sterling isn't he I've, like I said in the first half I've not seen Raheem Sterling play like this for a very long time his first thought is forward his first thought is direct and quite often it's with him running the, running at the defence he looked really good in the first half he's just done exactly the same there Raheem Sterling was joint top scorer for Chelsea last season with just the nine goals with Havertz free kick then Enzo Fernandez takes this plays it in towards the back post and a good header away from Solchek how many times have seen him do that defending the big midfielder getting himself in there and just making sure he gets his head to the ball to glance it out eventually in this case for a throw into Chelsea over on the far side a huge splash of sunshine on all of that white and claret and blue in the stands on the opposite side of the ground Chelsea take the throw and it comes to nothing it bounces behind off I think Chilwell for a goal kick and West Ham will be in no hurry and now here it is here's the moment here's the moment after Chelsea agreed a record fee involving a British club for 21-year-old Moises Caicedo of Ecuador. And it is uh, going to be a rejig here for Chelsea because the, the captain, Ben Chilwell, the captain today, Ben Chilwell is being withdrawn from the left wing-back position. And actually, Thiago Silva is taking the armband across to Enzo Fernandez. But here he comes now. Just imagine how his heart is beating. This little man from Ecuador, 21 years old, signed for £115 million, is onto the field. And he takes up a position almost instinctively in the centre of the Chelsea midfield with that new number 25 on his back. So it begins for him, Paul Robinson. And it looks like Chelsea have immediately reverted to a back four with Caicedo just sat in front of the back four. Colwell's gone to left back. Di Sassi and Silva sent the halves and then Gusto on the right back. So it is, it's a, it's a new start for him, but it's a new formation for Chelsea. So here's Enzo Fernandez, 105 million pounds himself. Ball played through into the penalty area for the run of Sterling. That was excellent work. Emerson, who breaks away with the ball and then puts the challenge in on Caicedo. He's got to be careful on the yellow card, but it was a fair challenge. Ben Rama couldn't keep the ball in. It rolled onto the white line. The assistant on this side, Lee Betts, immediately his flag was up they don't like it in the stands but he was looking down the line and it's a throw into Chelsea David Moyes didn't like it either he's given the official a piece of his mind he too was looking down the line but I think his line was slightly more biased than the officials I can't remember which game it was but I covered a match here once do you remember where uh, West Ham conceded a goal when the ball went out of play and back in above David Moyes' head Mudrick down the left hand side crosses towards the back post Sterling gets there Sterling now shoots but it's blocked blocked out to the edge of the area here now Gallagher with a shot defender throws himself in the way of that so check it was and then Caicedo tries a volley but miss hits it with players bearing down on him and it's a goal kick and they are jeering and cheering at him from the stands the West Ham fans 
He's going to get that this year's Caicedo. With price tag like that comes expectation. With any type of success comes expectation. And he's carrying the weight of £115 million around with him. And he's, you know, wherever you're going to go, people are going to judge and people are going to watch his every move. Goal kick. West Ham 2, Chelsea 1. Uh, Zarnell Hughes, by the way, very soon will be trying to do what Katarina Johnson-Thompson has already done for Great Britain in Budapest and try and win a gold medal, Zarnell Hughes, in the 100 metres. We will have commentary on that, but I will uh, give you warning when it is getting closer. And uh, our All About Athletics podcast all this week, uh, quite fittingly today, Dame Denise Lewis is the, is the focus of today's. Steve Cram yesterday. And uh, West Ham are going to bring on a debutant of their own, Edson Alvarez is coming on for his West Ham debut, £35 million from Ajax. He was the first West Ham signing uh, after Declan Rice was sold really right at the start of the summer. West Ham fans were wondering when that first signing was going to come and eventually it did. Edson Alvarez will be coming on, the Mexican international. So West Ham 2, Chelsea 1 and this of course is after this Chelsea reshuffle, the change of formation from Maurizio Pochettino. But still, the score remains West Ham 2, Chelsea 1 after that thumping finish from Mikel Antonio. He'll be talking about that on the podcast, I'm absolutely certain. Strikers like talking about goals that they've scored, don't they? So selfish, aren't they? <laughs> Here's Thiago Silva with the ball in the centre circle, passes it forward, that was read by Aguerd, and Aguerd to his left to Mikel Antonio, who turns, shields the ball from Enzo Fernandez, finds Ben Rama. Ben Rama goes around Colwell, who tackles back extremely well. So for a moment there he was away, Ben Rama, but excellent defending from Colwell in front of the England manager, Gareth Southgate. Does really well, Antonio puts his strike partner, Ben Rama, through, and he just gets the wrong side of the defender, but he does so well, uses his pace, gets back in, and puts the challenge in the penalty box. Talking to Matthew Upson last week, England defender. You know, and I'm, I'm in agreement with him. I will uh, have a feeling that Colwell, if all is well, will be in the England squad at some point this season. I think we might be seeing a few of these Chelsea youngsters in there, and maybe one of the older ones in Raheem Sterling mm -hmm. as well, if he continues to play the way he has today. However, in the match, West Ham 2, Chelsea 1. And West Ham have already scored a goal from a corner from Ward Prowse. This is from the left-hand side. Ward Prowse swings it into the near post and it's headed up and away for Chelsea back out towards this side of the field by Jackson comes back into the Chelsea box though it's played out to the left hand side the cross from the left from Pakatar goes a long way and the shot on the edge of the penalty area through a crowd of players is actually dragged wide by Ben Rama and it is a goal kick and West Ham lead 2-1 Pakatar was brilliant then. The ball came back out to him from the corner and you just expected him just to lift it back into the box. The centre-halves are up, the full-backs are up. Everyone's expecting him to lift it into the box, into the crowded area. He doesn't, he pulls it back to the edge of the box. It's a really clever, clever little ball that he's done. It's going to be a double change for West Ham, Paul. Edson Alvarez is coming on for his debut, but Pablo Fornals, who started last week against Bournemouth in the 1-1, uh, but uh, left out today, just the one change with Ward-Prowse coming in. Fornals is going to come on as well. Oh, Pakatan might have just tweaked a little hamstring there, or has he? A little hobble. Uh, lines are open for 606, 08, 08, 5, 909, 693. Uh, get in touch, 85058, hashtag BBC 606. And uh, Chelsea through the middle. Jackson with a flick, bounces to Mudrick. Mudrick just drops his shoulder, but then couldn't find the pass to the far side. That was, that was blocked. Back to Chelsea, though. And here is the new man, Caicedo up to the left-hand side, where Mudrick runs his foot all over the ball, plays it back out of the area to the edge of the D, but Antonio read that, put in the challenge on Caicedo, won it, and then tried to pass the ball towards Ben Rama, just intercepted by Colwell, and the ball ran back towards the penalty area where goalkeeper Ariola, all in yellow, was able to step out of the box and wallop it away down the middle. Yeah, it does well there, but that's the threat that West Ham carry on the break. Ben Rama's coming over to his left-hand side more and more in this second half. And between him and Antonio, they're trying to break the lines and they've had uh, limited success. 2-1 West Ham. Those two West Ham substitutes still waiting to come on. But the ball's still in play. It's played through the middle for Chelsea. Oh, oh mm, now booked, he? Aguerd has slid in on Jackson, taken his legs, and it's a second yellow card. And Aguerd just badly mistimed that challenge on Jackson. And when you're on a yellow card, uh, I mean, that is that is 
<laughs> you, you do wonder. And he's off. He's sent off. West Ham are now down to 10 men. Listen, it's not a bad tackle, but it's a yellow card. It's just a stupid error by the centre-half. The ball's 40, 45 yards from goal. He's completely mistimed a tackle on Jackson. And he's going to cost his team here, you know, potentially. He's just mistimed a tackle. He's nowhere near his goal. Jackson's not even got the ball. He's just reaching for it. And he's slid in. He's already booked. He should, he should know that. He should have more experience and he should understand the state of the game. He had no reason to make that tackle in that area of the field. Well, that's going to mean a reshuffle, isn't it? You would have thought. Um, in terms of the substitutes and uh, I, I presume that's step forward Angelo Og Ogbonna who uh, is now putting his shirt on and it's going to be a triple change Chelsea will restart play with a free kick the tackle happened in the middle of the half as well it's played in, Jackson was just too quick for him wasn't he, just a little touch he knew that Aguerd was coming and now Aguerd is going, he's off here's Mudrick, left hand side 2-1 Chelsea lead but West Ham down to 10 men Mudrick, that's over hit far too much on that from the Ukrainian over everyone in the box and bounces wide of the far post as he looked at it and we will see the changes now this could be I mean we've played 68 minutes I mean at times in the first half West Ham were really wanting the half time whistle now with 10 men if Chelsea start to dominate possession with the extra injury time that we know we're going to get West Ham are looking at a, a good 30 minutes of you know chasing the ball mm. well he's going to make just the one change initially and it is uh, as you might have picked up there from the loudspeakers, Ben Rama is the player who is sacrificed. And Angelo Ogbonna, all of his experience, is going to trot on for his first appearance of this season. The former Italian international. And uh, David Moyes, full of instructions for him, arm round the shoulder, talking to him all the way from the seats to the edge of the pitch. But I think it'd be fairly clear. Paul Robinson what he has to do here because this is probably going to be West Ham backs to the wall do you know what will be interesting as well to us to see the, how the, the referee officiates with the, the new instructions that we've had on timekeeping and game management Good because time. I suspect 12-18 months ago West Ham might be using some game management in these last few minutes how many, and then the question therefore follows how many yellow cards are West Ham going to receive in the remaining well 20 minutes to hang on for what would be some win this in the circumstances long way to go with 10 men as uh, Sterling now has it on the right hand side Sterling turns takes on Emerson to the byline cuts back Emerson went with him and it's Pakata who is back in there seems okay from uh, I mentioned the fact that I saw him just hold the back of his leg and then Pakata is fouled by Mudrick who doesn't like that and Mudrick says to Pakata you can just get on your feet and then oh, oh, Mudrick goes across to him and, and places his hand on Pakatar's chest, shoulder and Pakatar goes down, throws himself down on the pitch and uh, you know the crowd are up now there saying Mudrick was overly aggressive Mudrick should be sent off for that but Pakatar's reaction was ridiculous Pakatar's reaction was ridiculous but Mudrick shouldn't go over to him he's lifted his arm, he's raised his arm He's pushed him. I mean, he's, he's hardly touched him. Pakatar's gone down. Seeing the incident again now. It's a tackle. It's actually Gallagher, Gallagher comes across it? him. Yeah, not much. And he just catches Pakatar. And Pakatar doesn't like it. And as he goes across to him, he just gives him a little shove on the shoulder. Pakatar goes down like he's been hit by a bus. Mm. Referee Brooks. And of course, what this is doing as well is further to the conversation this is all slowing everything down and John Brooks has, has not taken action against either Pakatar or Gallagher <laughs> but he has shown a yellow card to well, Jackson, Jackson. Yeah, for his commentary I don't think he was uh, impressed with what he said to him he was having his 10 pence worth I think okay so Jackson is booked for that David Moyes is now talking to the fourth official Craig Pawson this is bubbling up here Paul West Ham leading 2-1. Certainly is, I mean, for a good finish. We are, London derby, plenty of spice. It's a, it's a game fixture I've quite often seen in recent years. And West Ham have quite often got results. Won four of their last eight home matches here against Chelsea. And here, they're in line for a, what we would call in the media an unlikely victory. Here's Antonio. Antonio on the halfway line turns and curls the pass over the top, looking for Bourne, but he's overhit that. It bounces through 
to goalkeeper Ariola. Uh, we are nearing Zarnell Hughes in the 100 metres at the World Athletics. Uh, we will be there in a, in a few minutes' time and we'll get there in good time to make sure that we take in the full enormity of that. Could be a, a really big day in the life of that young man as well. But here for West Ham, Antonio, even from this distance, it seems his shirt is is darkened by the perspiration on what is a really warm summer's afternoon here next to the Queen Elizabeth II Park. And uh, Madueki, Noni Madueki, the England under-21 international is going to come on for Chelsea. Here's Sterling now as Chelsea come forward. Ball played to the right-hand side. The cross from the right from Colwell comes down to the far side of the penalty area and then a slip by Mudrick just as he was dancing with the ball. He actually lost his footing and the cheers from the West Ham fans as it was cleared away out for a throw on the right, or on the left to Chelsea, which is taken now centrally. Caicedo, the substitute on his debut, his Chelsea debut. The number 25, as I say, having uh, made only 53 appearances for Brighton. Another great piece of business by Brighton and Hove Albion Football Club. Ball across from Gusto, now centrally to Thiago Silva. Back it comes centrally again for Chelsea. Gallagher moving from left to right, passes it to Gusto. The right back as he is now, Gusto, back onto his left foot, infield from him, little touch from Caicedo, and West Ham with the ten men, all behind the ball, of course, all behind the ball, all in their own defensive third, and Chelsea now have got to find a way through a forest of claret and blue, and they're not going to find it like that, as De Sassi, <laughs> absolutely, I mean, that was the touch, he should be at the World Athletics throwing the hammer, because it went way beyond the far post, and out for a throw-in, and it's Conor Gallagher who's coming off, who is going to be roundly booed for his involvement in the incident involving Pakatar. But that means we're going to see Noni Marueke coming on for his first appearance of the season. And uh, and he, at the end of last season, was an, was an excellent part of England's under-21, European under-21 championship winning squad. And actually did quite well when he was playing for, for Chelsea, having been signed from uh, PSV in January. Looking for a bit of creativity is Pochettino, isn't he? I mean, his team were good in the first half but they've struggled to break this West Ham side down in the second half. And like you quite rightly said, there's going to be two banks of five when they're out of possession. They're going to be deep. It's going to be attack versus defence. So it might be a grandstand finish here, 15 minutes to go. West Ham two, Chelsea one, but first to Budapest, the 100 metres, Alison Kerbishley with Catherine Merry. The athletes are out on the track. The eight men that have made the World 100 metre final. Blue skies, 33 degrees, nearly 35,000 fans, and one world title up for grabs. Ford of Jamaica goes in two, Tobago of Botswana goes in three, Christian Coleman, the former champion of the USA, goes in four. Great Britain and Northern Ireland, Zarnell Hughes, the fastest man in the world this year, starts in five. Lane number six goes Noah Lyles, the fastest qualifier, Oblique Seville of Jamaica in seven, Sani Brown of Japan in eight, and the world number two, Omanyala of Kenya in nine. The athletes are brought to their blocks. The USA have won the last three world titles, a clean sweep in Eugene last year. Not possible in 2023 because the defending champion Fred Curley did not qualify for this final. The athletes settle down. Times mean nothing. Who's about to deliver right now in this men's 100 meter world championship final? Zarnell Hughes, lane number five, the last to settle. Camera focusing on Christian Coleman, the American in lane number four. Impressive in qualifying. Noah Lyles, the fastest qualifier in six. And it's a clean start in the final of the men's 100 metres. Tobogo out well. Coleman of America going well in lane number four. Hughes has got a bit of work to do here. Christian Coleman's been reeled back. Noah Lyles is going to take the gold. Zarnell Hughes has got a medal here. And let's just confirm, it looks like Noah Lyles has the gold in 9.84 seconds it's gonna flash up Noah Lyles is delighted he's not sure he's sure now he raises his arms to the air the fans go wild gold has gone to the USA again to Noah Lyles 9.83 equaling the world lead of Zarnell Hughes let's just wait for the silver let's just wait for the bronze where are they going to go Alison Kerbishley I think Zarnell Hughes has got a medal here because he looked across to Lyles and smiled with the broadest smile you can imagine. I think the young man, Tobogo, 
in lane two. Yeah, he's now confirmed as silver. And then it's the bronze. It was a clean sweep of about three guys. Christian Coleman, the former world champion from Doha in 2019, was in the mix. But Zarnell Hughes, did he sneak? Yes! He has 9.88. We have a medalist. He was the quickest man coming into this field. And now he can finally climb onto the podium. The last medal that Great Britain Northern Ireland won in the men's world final was back in 2003. Darren Campbell picked up a bronze. Zarnell Hughes is the world bronze medalist. Just like Katerina Johnson Thompson, John Murray is on the track in tears. Very good. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Kath. And more of that sort of thing all week on Five Live. Live commentary from Budapest, Five Live Sport, every night this week with Catherine Mary, Alison Kirbishley and the rest of our team uh, on BBC television as well, all week too. Here at the London Stadium, we have just over 10 minutes to go and West Ham still lead Chelsea by two goals to one. Chelsea continuing to put on the pressure. David Moyes has made another change. Fornals has now come on. But Chelsea coming forward. The ball lifted over the top by Caicedo. The uh, record breaker coming on as a substitute in the second half as well. But Chelsea now just outside the box. Gusto on the right-hand side. Gusto's cross whipped into the edge of the area. It's through everyone there. And out towards the far side where Fornals will keep the ball in. Fornals, by the way, coming on for Antonio. So Fornals and Ogbonna. Uh, as he plays it up to Bourne and Bourne now he's got a lot to do he's trying to occupy the three Chelsea men who are around him Fornals arrives gives it back to Bourne onto his left foot Bourne shoots and Ariola uh, Sanchez drops down onto his knees and just parries it out does really well there Bourne holds the ball up just gives West Ham a little bit of breathing space now Antonio has gone off they're still trying to pack that midfield but Jared Bowen's the one who's been asked to play as a false nine he's the escape route when they need a, a long ball out and he held the ball up really well there kept the Chelsea defenders at bay and he actually created a shot on target for himself that's Paul Robinson England goalkeeper with us here watching from on high on the dugout side of the ground West Ham 2-1 up West Ham led in the first half through Aguirre's header Chukwameka who's since gone off injured scored a very good equaliser but Mikel Antonio scored a very good second goal for West Ham. Chelsea have also missed a penalty. Fernandez had a first half penalty saved by Ariola. Cross from the right hand side from Gusto. Cleared out. And then the shot on the edge of the penalty area from Colwell, who just controlled it, hit it left footed, again through a crowd of players but wide of the foot of the right post as he looked at it. He'll be pleased, David Moyes, with the way that his team have reacted since they've had a man sent off. We know they're not going to have all the possession like they didn't in the first half, but they've had two banks of five when they're out of possession. They've tried to affect Chelsea, and Chelsea's chances have been limited thus far. And now the uh, the third substitution, James Ward-Prowse, after his debut, the long-time Southampton man, former Southampton captain, just runs his hair, runs his hand through that neat blonde hair, and David Moyes gives him a, a little high five and a slap on the back as well. He provided the ball for both goals. As we knew he would this season, he's going to go to get assists. He's on all the set plays, he's on the corners, he's on the free kicks. And that was an impressive debut from him with two assists. And so, Edson Alvarez comes on, signing from Ajax, experienced Mexican international, 68 caps. He's 25 years old. Used to play under Eric Ten Hag, won a couple of league titles there at Ajax. Uh, as I came in to the stadium today, I bumped into a couple of Mexicans who said, we're going to be here a lot this season. We, we follow all of the Mexicans in the Premier League. So they were at Fulham yesterday and, uh, and they'll often be coming to watch Edson Alvarez. He's a quality player, isn't he, for those people who haven't watched much football like outside of the UK. I mean, he's very experienced in the Mexican side. He was a key part of a very successful summer that they had this summer. Experienced internationally with 60 odd caps, I think. And he's won two Eri divisions with Ajax. However, he's not the most famous footballer called Edson, and he never will be. <laughs> West Ham 2, Chelsea 1. Here's Enzo Fernandez, square to Caicedo, middle of the West Ham half. West Ham with 10 men after the sending off of Aguerd in the 68th minute for two bookable offences. Sterling, Sterling slips it forward. The, uh, the pass from Madueke, looking to cut it back, but that was intercepted by Alvarez, who's just onto the field. 
corner from the right for Chelsea the build up's a bit slow and a bit predictable unlike they were in the first half they were good they were quick in the first half and they're struggling to break West Ham down just a bit sticky isn't it but it's but it's almost more difficult now because of the fact that um, it's a packed defence Mason Burstow's coming on, the 20-year-old. This is his senior competitive debut for Chelsea. Played pre-season, uh, former Charlton man, has been back at, on loan at Charlton. Here's the corner in towards the near post. That's headed away. West Ham, the stretch and clearance from Alvarez. Mudrick takes it round the outside into the penalty area at pace. And then the cross is blocked behind for a corner for Chelsea from the left-hand side. Yeah, West Ham, they're defending very narrow. They're pushing Chelsea down the sides and trying to get them to play outside of their block. This is the perfect example of a very low block. Yeah, very, very, very low block. Corner then for Chelsea into the near post. That one is headed away by Pakatar and... Uh, and, and uh, Fornells battling for it over there has conceded a free kick Chelsea with a free kick over on the left hand side everything's urgency now for Maurizio Pochettino's Chelsea facing defeat here for the first time in the Premier League under their new manager cross though from the left hand side it's kept in by Zuma played back towards the figure of Raheem Sterling 25 yards out but I mean it is so congested the West Ham penalty area Madueke back to Sterling Sterling now tries to go to the byline takes it on gets the crossover touches a West Ham head Ogbonna in the middle then it's scraped away for West Ham and then uh, it's taken down by Bowen and that's excellent work Bowen and Fornells together and Fornells passes it back for Emerson and Emerson has to get a touch on that which he does back to goalkeeper Ariola who will rather calmly oh. take the ball onto his right foot and then not so calmly overhit the pass straight out of play for a throw to Chelsea on the far side. He's just kicked it out of play, hasn't he? Just completely missed the pass to, to Soufal. Times like this in the game, West Ham just need a little bit of composure. They're not going to have much possession, but when they do have the ball, they've got to look after it in areas that's not going to cause Chelsea a problem, but get away from their own goal. So Chelsea, after, uh, after all of their expenditure, we've got the unlikely front two of Mason Burstow and Nicholas Jackson. Here's Sterling, now down the right-hand side, chips it across. Oh, Mudrick has got that volley badly wrong. He sent it, actually skied it into the back where it came, into the, into the full-back area. And there's an offside flag up as well. And it'll have to be better than that for Chelsea. He's got that so badly wrong as Mudrick. Sterling again down this right hand side he just lifts the ball up to the far post the West Ham defence are very narrow like I said Mudrick just goes in around the back completely unmarked it's an awful finish from him and the flag is actually for Raheem Sterling off Mudrick's attempted shot was that a chuckle I heard <laughs> well when you watch it on match of the day two tonight you'll see what I mean it's very unkind Paul Robinson West Ham two Chelsea one we're into the last five minutes here Bumper Monday Night Club tomorrow in Five Live Sport. Chris Sutton, Michael Richards, Izzy Christensen, Adam Crafton with Mark Chapman. And Chris Sutton will be standing by with Robbie Savage to take your calls on Five Live 08085 909 693. Uh, it text 85058, hashtag BBC 606 to get involved. Uh, they are waiting to take your calls. But we still may have drama yet. There'll be a, This will be one where there is plenty of time added on. It could be guess your added time time again as Thiago Silva carries the ball forward Caicedo in the centre circle Caicedo now out to the right hand side that's where Sterling is now all of those claret and blue shirts drop back into position Sterling takes on Pakatar down the line still Sterling Pakatar put in the challenge Sterling reacted tried to win the free kick John Brooks wasn't buying that it's only a throw in Caicedo takes it David Moyes he might, he might be off on another dance if they win this one, David Moyes. Second time in three competitive matches. Madueke up towards the edge of the penalty area. He dives in for it. West Ham, they've got players surrounding Madueke and also Burstow, who's in there. Mason Burstow to Sterling on the right-hand side. Quite a big guy, Mason Burstow, for a 20-year-old. For Chelsea coming forward again. Up to the edge of the penalty area. That is blocked by Solfal. Solfal then goes down under the challenge that comes in on him from Colwell, and it's a free kick to West Ham. 
and a sigh of relief for these thousands and thousands of West Ham supporters. There's a little bit of respite that's needed. It's amazing when the referee gave the free kick, there was four West Ham players on the haunches, bent down on the ground to see if they could just waste a couple more minutes. And the referee, before the goalkeeper's even picked the ball up, has gone to have a word with him. He's, he's, he is making it absolutely clear. A yellow card is coming your way, Alphonse, if you take any longer than this over this then you have to I tell you what though John it'll be interesting to see the first referee to give a goalkeeper two yellow cards yeah. see if there's one brave enough yeah well funnily enough we were talking about that last week at Newcastle when Martin has received the yellow card and was, was wasting time uh, it will happen here's Pakatar who takes the ball down into the corner flag and uh, and wins a throw-in or free kick he was challenged there and uh, I think it is a a free kick Caicedo and so West Ham now the ball is waiting off the field Emerson is taking ever such a long time Emerson as long as he possibly can to get there to take this to throw in actually against his former club Emerson Champions League winner actually when he was at Chelsea part of the the Porto crew takes the throw Pakatar plays it into the shins of Caicedo that's another West Ham throw and of course with the long runoff areas here the ball runs right away to uh, the advertising hoarding so Emerson walks and he's uh, he is within his rights here it's not it's not a slow walk but it's a walk <laughs> and he gets there to the edge of the pitch we're in the 40 uh, we are in the 89th minute West Ham lead 2-1, five live in the World Service. Bowen trying to win a corner on the dead ball line, but the final touch was off the West Ham man, it's a goal kick. Yeah, this, he does that well, does Jarrod Bowen, he's got the engine, he's got the ability to do that, he's dropping back now into midfield and he plays that false nine, and he's the out ball should they need it. They're going to have another 10, 12 minutes or so of defending to do yet though, West Ham. Yeah, we are still in the 89th minute, it will be at least seven, possibly eight, maybe nine at a time as uh, Enzo Fernandez tries to scoop the ball forward Ariola could have let that go actually but came across and actually controlled it and is now running his foot over it and now picks it up they'll think of this as a famous victory David Moyes two competitive matches after seeing his team win a cup his West Ham team if this had gone against him today it would be very interesting to see what the reaction would be as it is they're winning it and then uh, Bowen is, is challenged by De Sassi and goes tumbling down. De Sassi has been yellow carded, but there wasn't a great deal in this. It's a foul, but it's just a free kick for West Ham. It's frustration more than anything because Bowen's doing a really good job. Chelsea can't get possession. Bowen's just trying to hold the ball up. He's just trying to get his teammates higher up the field. And from De Sassi, it's, it's just sheer frustration that he can't get hold of the ball. Do you think seven minutes? Higher than seven or lower than seven? Of added time. What we don't know these days, do we? <laughs> I might have to go and put another ticket on the car, John. Pakatar plays the free kick forward. Well, West Ham could have taken time over that. The answer is it's going to be six minutes. Thought it might be more. Pakatar. We're not into it yet. Oh, yes, we are. We are now into it. The fourth official comes forward with the ball. Fornals has got away into the penalty area. Fornals could score. Oh, no. Sanchez sticks out a right leg and prevents it going into the bottom left corner. Well, that would have won it for West Ham. I don't think there was anyone more surprised in the stadium with the four nails that he ended up. It was Caicedo who sloppily gives the ball away. He just hits four nails knee, finds himself one-on-one -on -one with Sanchez, drags the shot and hits Sanchez's right knee. Really sloppy in possession from Caicedo. What a strange game this has been. <laughs> Entertaining. And West Ham have got it back again, and it's Emerson who tries to pull it back towards uh, Bourne inside the penalty area. Clearance from Colwell, and then down, tumbling down, twisting over time and time again. Uh, goes Paquetar, but he's not going to get a free kick for that. He might as well get up and get back on the field because Chelsea are breaking away with Jackson. Very good challenge, though, from Socek on Jackson just as he was looking to break free. Now it's Mudrick. Mudrick moving from left to right. Low ball out to the right-hand side to Madueke. In added time, Madueke in field, opens up, deflected. Oh, good save by Ariola down to his left. Came off Socek. I'm sure it was creeping in and Ariola had to change direction there which he did stuck out a left hand and pushed it around the post corner Madueke does brilliant there Socek thinks he's helping his goalkeeper out causes him problems gets a deflection on it going in the bottom left hand corner Ariola adjusts his feet from the original shot gets across his goal and makes a fantastic save might have just got his team a win 
There speaks the goalkeeper. Defender thinks he's helping his goalkeeper out. <laughs> Almost deflected it in. Her first corner is taken short. They win another one, Chelsea. So second consecutive corner. Mudrick to take it from the right-hand side. The Hammers fans trying to do their bit. Mudrick, it's a deep out swinger. And it is comes off a Chelsea head, but takes it out towards the far side. Sterling has it nipped away from him by Fornals. Fornals tries to win a throw in. And then sliding into it over on the on the far side goes Alvarez. Chelsea win the ball back though after that, after it runs free. We've had two minutes. We're in the third minute of the six of added time. West Ham 2, Chelsea 1. On 5 Live, 6.06 is on the way. But first, Chelsea attack. Madueke, poor ball in at knee height. Ogbonna was able to clear that away with his claret and blue striped socks pulled right up over his knees. Chelsea again. Caicedo on in the second half for his Chelsea debut. Square to Enzo Fernandez. Over £200 million of talent right there. And Enzo Fernandez's cross is too deep, too high, and Ariola makes the catch. Yeah, they're really deep now, West Ham. They really are on the last legs. They're sitting on the edge of Ariola's box. They don't really want to get up the field in possession. They're just accepting the fact that Chelsea have got the ball, trying to keep it in front of them, trying to keep it down the sides. They've got the opportunity now to clear the lines. West Ham 2, Chelsea 1. And actually, you know, Paul, when you think about it, I mean, Chelsea had quite a number of close things in the first half, as well as scoring the goal through the injured Chukwameka. In the second half, in terms of opportunities to score, relatively few. As now the ball is being brought forward for West Ham by Pakita, up to the edge of the penalty area, gives it to Emerson. Surely Emerson will turn. West Ham with ten men and take this to the corner flag, but no, Emerson looks for it from Pakita, and then Emerson is Isn't brought it? down. It's a penalty to West Ham. Twist in this remarkable game, and it's Caicedo, the record transfer, who has conceded it, sliding in, bringing down Emerson. What a, what a, an amazing turn of events! Yet another one in this match. Well, it's thrown up so many surprises this game, and another one. We've got another penalty in the 94th minute. Emerson and Pakatar playing one twos on the edge of the box, and all they're trying to do is stay in the Chelsea half. Caicedo makes an, such an untimely challenge. It's a really ugly challenge. It's a penalty. He takes down Emerson, and West Ham have got the opportunity to put this game to bed. This to win it 3 1. Who on earth would have thought it? The way that this game has gone, and I think it's Pakatar, isn't it? Who's very much in the focus of things with what's been going on with him over the course of the last couple of days. So who knows what the future holds for Lucas Paquetar, but he steps back to the edge of the penalty area. This to win it, to beat Chelsea for West Ham, but he comes a little stutter. It's in! It's 3-1! David Moy celebrates! West Ham celebrate! An unlikely win for West Ham, but a win nevertheless! And Maurizio Pochettino and Chelsea must wonder, how has it come to this? West Ham 3, Chelsea 1. Well, at half-time we were waxing lyrical about Chelsea, how good they were, how they kept the ball, the possession they had. Chelsea should have been 3-1 up at half-time. You've got to give West Ham so much credit for the way that they've come out in this second half. They've disrupted Chelsea, they've stopped them playing, and even with ten men, they've still created chances of their own. They've done really well in this second half of West Ham. David Moyes' half-time team talk certainly had the tonic. Honestly, Paul, how many games do we see? Dozens, dozens, scores, scores and scores. And then again, you come to a match like this and football surprises you over and over again. But they say the game of two halves hasn't been enough. Mauricio Pochettino stands there, he's got his tracksuit top open, his Chelsea tracksuit top, black and white it is, and uh, it's a bit like the Steve Davis used to set up, they lost that final. <laughs> it's honestly, all happened down there in black and white. I don't think the most hardened of West Ham fans would have predicted that their team would not only win this, but would win it 3-1. So Sterling now down the, the right-hand side, but the game's gone, the game is up. For Chelsea and Maurizio Pochettino, famous victory on the day that they've paraded the Europa Conference League trophy here. West Ham starting out at home in the Premier League this season with a win against Chelsea. 
It'd be one point from the opening two games for Maurizio Pochettino as the Chelsea manager. I mean, better times will come. At times today, they've looked very good indeed, but they're losing. Sterling and uh, with the ball on the right hand side with Burstow. And West Ham play it out from the back. But it doesn't matter, they don't have to worry about wasting too much time now with only seconds left, in fact, the seven minutes. We've had seven minutes of added time. More will have been added on for the goal celebration. But no more, that's it. The final whistle goes in the first Premier League match of the season here at West Ham's London Stadium. And quite a win it is for them. West Ham three, Chelsea one. Finishing the match with 10 men and winning it right at the end with that penalty scored by Lucas Pakatar. Some game, Paul Robinson. Oh, fantastic. It's been a pleasure to be here today. This stadium's still packed and you can hear the fans. They're enjoying every minute of it, and rightly so. David Moyes' West Ham team, they look a different outfit to even what they were at the start of last year. The confidence that that trophy win last season has given this group of players. The togetherness, the energy, the enthusiasm they showed, the, the desire not to be beaten at the end of the game was incredible with 10 men. But listen, brighter times are ahead for Chelsea. They were very good in the first half, really good in the first half. But West Ham found a way. So there we are, Maurizio Pochettino loses in his second Premier League match as the Chelsea manager. Their first Premier League defeat of the season, of course. But for West Ham, an unbeaten start. Four points from the first two matches. And David Moyes is out there on the pitch applauding to all sides of the stadium as the West Ham fans sing their song. And it is West Ham 3, Chelsea 1 that is the final score here.